bienvenidos todos, vamos a dar inicio a, esta, a este Ateneo con, con Perry y amigos. Eh, oye, ¿querés eh, decir algunas palabras de, y saludar a, la, a todos los que están acá presentes? Bueno, agradecer de vuelta a Perry, a Eric, por la excelente disposición que tiene siempre para estar con nosotros. Es, hay muchísima gente conectada y esperemos que técnicamente nos vaya bien. Perry está distraído, pero bueno, después hablaremos con él. Cuando quieran empezamos. Por favor, cierremos todos los micrófonos y los videos, así mejoramos la calidad de... Uh -huh. de la transmisión. Uh -huh. ¿Sí, compartiendo la pantalla con ustedes? Uh -huh. Viviana. Okay. Viviana. Yes. yes. Okay. So we have some technical issues here. Okay. Zoom call was set up so only 100 people can participate. Yes, it's a lot. Well, I, no, wait, li, 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 listen, Bibiana, listen, listen. Yeah. Okay, so now there are a hundred people and we need Cece and she can't get on because she's black. As her, so, so a couple of your partners or some, somebody needs to get off one or two so she can get on. We need her to help translate. Okay. You need to, to wait for Cecilia? No, no, no. No. Okay. They're, 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 the meeting is already at maximal capacity. There's more yeah. than 100 people trying to get on. Yeah. So everybody after 100 cannot get on. They cannot connect because there's a limit of only 100 on the Zoom yeah. call. Yes. So we need CC, somebody down there, somebody in, uh, in your Alguien se puede bajar para que entre Cecilia? Sí, yeah, the, the thing is the following. I see the waiting list and she's not there, or at least she doesn't have her user on on it because I see 15 people on the waiting list and I don't see Cecilia anywhere. Cecilia Pascual Garrido is not in the list? She's not. She's, she is not connected. So maybe she's on under a different name. I see an iPhone that is not, uh, you know, uh, with any name. Maybe it's her. I don't know. So I would need her to join her and see her at the waiting list. They're trying to tell her that right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Puedo compartir... So, no, why don't I... So I will talk slowly. Okay. Well, this is our last meeting with you and Perry um, and Eric and Greg. We all miss you a lot. So we decided to do this kind of meeting. If you want to share your screen, you can start. Share their screens there. She's still blocked out from the meeting. Talk, talk, talk. Yep, yep, yep. Give me one second. Uh, if has he already joined or not, Cecilia? She's not able to join right now because the video's maxed out. Yeah, Dr. Gordon is getting the same. Uh, it, there is room yet. I mean, I need her to like put her phone it, to be able to recognize her because I have. Eric Gordon en el, en la lista de espera? I have Baxter, I'm admitting him right now, and uh, no, I don't see Gordon, unless he's one of the two iPhones that are not with any names, you know, because if I don't see the name, I, I can't recognize them. Okay. Yeah, so the, I think the, uh, the problem is you can't even get into the waiting room, um, Right now, there's 84 people in the meeting. There's 16 people in the waiting room, so that's 100 total. Anyone over that number doesn't even get into the waiting room. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I understand, but 
Oh, here I see Cecilia, I just admit her. Acá está Cecilia, la encontramos. And we are still missing Dr. Gordon. Is that yeah, right? Dr. Gordon is trying to get in, but he's having the same, uh, same problem. I'm here. Thanks to Willis. Hola Cecilia, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y vos? Muy bien, muy bien. Eric está esperando por ti. Gracias. I still don't see Eric. Cecilia is here with us. Great. Ba uh, looks like Baxter Willis in the waiting room would need to be admitted. He's from Canada, one of the faculty there. I already admitted him. He should be able right now. Okay. Baxter Willis is center. Uh, and then Dr. Gordon is having the same issue of more than 100 that you were having, Dr. Pascual. Okay. Yes, but we didn't know that uh, there are a lot of iPhones without name. Yeah, he should have a name. He's usually listed okay. on a name. Um, I think let me ask him. Dice que, hay, que tiene nombre. Oh, eh? Pero no me aparece yeah. en el lugar. Buenos días, Viviana. Yes. Buenos días, from Canada. Hi, Dr. Baxter Willis. Nice to see you. We are, we are very proud to, to have you in, the, in this meeting. Oh. There are a lot of guys from Latin America. And we are waiting for Dr. Eric Gordon to enter. Okay. So there's a limit that you're experiencing with the 100. So we're working to kind of have some people down there team up to open up some space. Um, we were able to get Dr. Pascal Garrido on. She had the same issue. So just maybe a few minutes. Um, but need we will uh, just stand by. I would just keep trying and we're going to keep trying to open it up. Lo que tienen estaría los auriculares. Para eso, pero tienen que ser. Right. You know, it, it comes in handy. Tomá, tienen que se gaste el papel de abajo. Sácalo. Sí. Teddy Slongo, Barbecue. Dr. Gordon is going to keep trying to log in. And he should pop up in the waiting room. If we can have some people team up. Uh, to open up some space because we're still at a hundred currently. Eh, Escucharon, chicos, que Eric. There we go. Identificado. I think we have. Sí, sí. Sí. Perry, I'm here. You are so popular, Perry, that we cannot start the meeting, huh? Where? <laughs> You muted, sorry. You're, on, you're back on. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know these people. I don't Excuse me. Yeah, you can have a seat. <clears throat> I think we should proceed. Thank you. Uh, we are very happy that. Uh, Dr. Stivers, one of our wonderful residents, is here with us, and I'm not at home. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think Eric is with us right now. Dr. Gordon should be with us. Yes, Eric? I think he's still trying to get in. Okay, we're waiting for Eric to get in. Uh, Baxter Willis is with us, correct, Baxter? I'm here, Perry. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Baxter is from Ottawa, Canada. He and I are long-term friends, and he, we have been coming to South America together, working with you, with everybody in a wonderful way for several uh, years. And I think, Cece, why don't you just introduce yourself, Cece Pasquale, who's one of my partners here uh, at Washington University. She's an adult hip surgeon, but can you introduce yeah. yourself, Cece? She's going to help us with translation. Where you're from and your connection so, yeah, right. in St. Louis. Yes, yeah, thank you, Perry. So uh, I'm Dr. Pascual. I, I'm originally from Argentina. I did my medical school in 
Universidad Favaloro, and then I did my training in the Hospital Italiano. Then I moved to the United States and I spent three years at Rush, basically working a lot on cartilage restoration. And then I trained in Hospital for Special Surgery, University of Colorado. And now I'm here at WashU with outstanding faculty and people. I'm part of the HIP group, basically with Dr. Cloisi and Dr. Schoenacher and Dr. Nebel. So uh, we have a group here where we do a lot of clinical research and also we have, I run a lab where we do all the studies of the molecular changes in the patients with pre treated disease. Um, and we're still waiting for Eric. Uh, thanks. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to hold on for Eric. So um, the, the format, and Eric knows the format, so I will tell the format, and then maybe Cece, you can tell them how we're going to do this. ¿Escucharon lo, la gente de CrossMed para...? Sí, Vivi, pero no, salvo yo, sí, sí. no hay gente de CrossMed. Ah, ok. okay. Sí, eh, todavía yo no lo veo al doctor Gordon en el waiting list, hice lugar y no lo veo, así que... So it seems, it seems Perry, that uh, we cannot see a request from Dr. Gordon. We, we did make some space, so he should be able to get in. Maybe if he tries again to get into the Zoom, like log, I, what I did was basically log out and then I logged in again. When I spoke with him, Dr. Pascal Garrido, I just asked him to keep trying, like you said, so I, he should yeah. be uh, continuing to try and log on. I just texted him again, so. Okay, perfect. So. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit. Yeah. So, so, as this is set up, Bibiana, Bibiana and I have talked about this, and um, she picked DDH, we'll talk about neonate to about six, seven years of age, a little anatomy on the ultrasound. I know some of you do or don't have ultrasound that much, um, but it's a nice teaching tool. Then about uh, the technique of close reduction, and when we do uh, this and when we do that, cast position, uh, and then we will transition into uh, simple open reduction and then more complex open reduction. And um, I have this set up so mostly um, there are questions on the slides. And then we, I would like to direct those questions uh, primarily to the uh, four fellows. Uh, that we have early saw this morning, Laura, Augustina, Juan, and Leandro. And then in turn, the faculty can ask questions as they like, but we're gonna keep this focused on the, on the slides that I have to sort of keep it moving. Cecilia, can you summarize that? Yes. So, lo que vamos a hacer básicamente va a ser interactivo. Vamos a presentar unos casos y hacemos un poco hincapié en ultrasonido, que es básicamente lo que usamos acá un poco para hacer el diagnóstico de la cadera displásica en el, en el bebé. Eh, tenemos un par de nombres que, normal, que Perry va a preguntar a ver qué ustedes piensan y eso, así que eh, la idea es súper que nadie tenga miedo de preguntar, si tienen ganas de hacer preguntas hagan, la idea es que todos aprendamos de, de esta presentación. Cecilia, eh, hay algunos residentes que no pudieron entrar a la charla, uh -huh. Por ejemplo, Laura no pudo entrar, eh, porque se, hay muchísima gente y, y, y hay gente que no pudo entrar. Así que algunas preguntas no van a ser contestadas. Decirle que él siga adelante con los... Barry. Yes. So, some of, the some of the names that you have are some residents that still are not able to get in. So I, I think that we can, we can ask, you know, a couple of questions, but if nobody answers, we will keep on moving. Because there's too many people. So there are some people that couldn't get in. So some of the names that you have are not here in the conference. Está Laura y está Leandro conectado. Laura y Leandro are here. So you can ask Laura y Leandro. Okay. Uh, there's no way you can change the Zoom call. I think you have to, it's like a pay, behind a paywall to get the unlimited. Okay, comp, okay, understand, well do. So the um, uh, 
conference centered at the Garahan Hospital comes on case presentations. The cases are from our work here at Washington University uh, at both Shriners and Children's Hospital. And uh, if anybody wants to disclose any conflicts, please do so at this time. Cecilia, can you summarize? Yeah, so todos los casos que vamos a presentar acá son del Children's Hospital y de también el Adult Hip, um, de la gente que trabaja acá. We are still waiting for space for Dr. Gordon and hopefully for some of your fellows, but we'll proceed with, uh, you say, uh, Laura and, uh, who, Laura and Leandro? Leandro. Yeah, okay. So uh, my special thanks to people who have helped me put this together. Uh, here in St. Louis, Don Russell, my medical assistant at Children's. Debbie Shemansky, who is a research associate here at the Shrine. Uh, all important, Marcella Sproul, who is a respiratory therapist here at the Shrine. Uh, originally comes from the great country of Colombia. And the last few uh, days, uh, one of our great fellows, Travis Winston, has helped me with the technical aspects of making these uh, complex slides. Uh, since I barely know how to turn on a computer, he was essential, as the other people have been. Please summarize, Cecilia. Básicamente, está agradeciendo a toda la gente que, que ayuda. Yeah, you can go, Per. So let's go ultrasound anatomy and uh, pelvic harness. So we initially see infantile instability, neonatal, with an exam. The simplest problem is a hip that's a little unstable, it's dislocatable, and most people in the world that I go to, at least North America, Europe, maybe South America, call this Barlow, a United Kingdom guy, positive hip. You can dislocate it, but it kind of goes back by itself. Cecilia. Yes. Um, Harry, I think actually I don't need to keep, let's ask Viviana. Viviana, do you think I need to keep on translating everything or you guys are will, will be okay with the pictures and the English? Yes, yes, it's okay. I think Perry is okay because the, the figures, you know, you can illustrate very nice the figures and they know English, so it will be okay. If they don't understand, they'll ask us. Dr. Gordon is in. Eric, can you hear us? He's joining. So good. That would be wonderful. I don't have to have everything repeated. Okay, and Dr. Gordon is getting in now. Eric is and our partners here at Washington University. And Baxter is with us. He is up at the way I mentioned before in Ottawa. So barrel positive hip, you can dislocate it and it's kind of takes care of itself. It goes back into place. And then we have also the hip that is kind of out when you first examine the patient as you gently abduct it and flex it, it's reducible. And to me, that's very, very important in planning my treatment I call it the Ortolani positive hip. If the hip does not reduce and we believe it's dislocated, that's an Ortolani negative hip, which is a concern for any kind of a closed technique. <clears throat> so we have an unstable hip that we can reduce. And if I would take an x-ray, I would see this. A one day old child, and if you look at them, both hips are dislocated, but you don't get much helpful information from an x-ray. Excuse me, Perry. Please, pueden, pueden sacar los micrófonos la gente que no está hablando, por favor. Mute, hagan el mute, so, así no escuchamos a todos, por favor, gracias. Perry, yeah, you can continue. So the details of cartilaginous anatomy just can't be seen because of all, maybe I should ask, no, because of all the soft tissues that are on top of the cartilage or with the cartilage or behind it. And the soft tissue ligaments, muscles, cartilage all have similar densities, water densities. So you can't see much detail of cartilage. Cecilia? So, ustedes ven, normalmente, obviamente, las radiografías no se puede ver el cartílago, pero básicamente por la cantidad de tejido de blando. Si vos no tuviésemos la cantidad de tejido blando, obviamente las podríamos ver a las estructuras. Pero básicamente es lo que pasa. Como es todo cartilaginoso, no las podemos ver en radiografía. This is a neonate cadaveric specimen. 
if all the soft tissues are removed and we take an x-ray of the specimen, watch what we see. So básicamente ahí ven que si nosotros sacamos el tejido blando y nada más tienen la estructura cartilaginosa, o sea, si es una radiografía se puede observar, pero nosotros en vivo no lo podemos ver en los pacientes por el tejido blando que tienen. We see a lot. So this is the x-ray, all soft tissues present, but you can't see much cartilage. With the, cart with the soft tissues removed, you can clearly see the cartilage as everybody sees the acetabulum, femoral head, trochanter. Sí, so la estructura se ve perfectamente si no tuviésemos los tejidos blandos. So the x-ray doesn't show details, but the ultrasound lets us see the cartilage. So nosotros acá utilizamos el ultrasonido, la ecografía, porque verdaderamente puedes observar todo, la cabeza femoral, el acetábulo, las estructuras blandas. So needle nail instability is confirmed if you, if you have that availability to you very nicely with an ultrasound. This okay. Ya más de 100. Por favor, muting. Thank you. So, ahí ven ustedes cuando se hace la, la dislocación de la cadera, se puede observar muy bien el, con el ultrasonido, cómo se, obviamente, se disloca y cómo se reduce. Entonces, eso es la manera que usamos acá en los Estados Unidos para ver el, la reducción y la dislocación de la cadera. So, thanks to Alex Eng in Hong Kong, here's some interesting x-rays and correlated with ultrasound anatomy. So, x-ray... I think it's self-explanatory in our CC, right? Ilium? Yes. Ischium? Pubis? Ossification center? Triradiate or Y-shaped cartilage? Labrum? Ossacetabuli? If we turn it 90 degrees to your left, And then we look at the coronal or longitudinal ultrasound, very similar. Mm -hmm. Difference being this nucleus is ossified much and there isn't any here. But very similar, turn your 90 degrees to the left. Can you explain that, Cece? Sí, so acá se ve claramente que básicamente lo que haces con la ecografía es como rotar la radiografía 90 grados a la izquierda. Entonces ahí ves tranquilo muy claro, la misma estructura que estarías viendo en una radiografía. Se ve muy claramente la cabeza femoral, el labrum, el acetabulum. Entonces, obviamente, la ecografía es, es un arma muy poderosa para ver eh, la cadera en, en el bebé. Let's compare. Asias, asias. Cartilaginous lip of the acetabulum. Labrum. Very nicely here, the gluteus, the probably, probably gluteus uh, minimus muscle right here. Minimus, yeah, gluteo minimo, el ischium. Ish, ischium. Tribate cartilage. Con el ultrasonido, básicamente ves todo. Todo lo que verías, obviamente, si, si no fuese cartílago, ¿no? En la cardiografía. A little less. A little more difficult to show, but the transverse view, mm -hmm. anterior to posterior. So, el, we, obviamente, el corte transverso la vamos a ver con la ecografía que puedes ver que es anterior y que es posterior. And then they bring in the probe from on the side of the leg. Anterior, posterior, growth plate. Say that, please, Cecilia. Es la cartilla o crecimiento. Oh. Head, ischium, pubis. The femoral head is seated very nicely in the acetabulum. Head of femur, alpha angle, beta angle, acetabular roof, comparative picture image over here. Oh. 
labrum acetabular roof. Now let's turn it like we take a AP X-ray. So, ves que si la pones como la ves en una radiografía es muy fácil de entender. Es básicamente lo mismo que veríamos en una radiografía, nada más que está acostada en vez de estar en AP, que sería como una radiografía normal. Entonces ve el labrum, el acetábulo, el roof, y obviamente que después hacemos mediciones para ver si esa cadera es considerada dislocada o subluxada o no. So, Leandro, uh, do you get to see ultrasound at all or get a chance? Leandro, ¿ustedes a veces usan ultrasonido allá o no? Leandro is not there. Laura, Laura, you get a chance? Laura? Hola, sí, ahí se escucha. Ah, sí, perfecto. Bueno, ¿qué tal? Yo soy Leandro. So, eh, Leandro is eh, talking now. So, Leandro, present yourself. What are you, a fellow or a resident? Eh, eh, soy fellow. becario fellow de primer año. Ah, buenísimo. He's a fellow, very. Yes, we asked the fellows the questions. Baby Anna said, ask the fellows sí, the questions. Eh, de, como estaba diciendo, nosotros usamos ecografía en el hospital. Eh, por suerte contamos con, con especialistas en imágenes que nos ayudan a, a entender un poco más el tema de los ángulos y demás. Excelente. So they are, they are using actually currently ultrasound. Para diagnóstico y control. He, they use them for initial diagnosis and follow up. Very good. So here we examine the newborn. And one day, about 30 years ago, I wa accidentally walked into the ultrasound real-time room, and this is what I saw. Go ahead, say that. <laughs> so, esto fue hace como muchos años atrás. Básicamente, se fue a ver cómo examinaban los bebés, y esto ahí lo ven ustedes ahí cuando empezó a entender lo de la ecografía, el uso de la ecografía en pacientes en bebés para diagnóstico. This very wonderful ultrasonographer explained to me what was happening 30, 35 years ago. So la señora le empezó a explicar cómo funcionaba, que nosotros como ortopistas a veces es difícil entender ultrasonido. So, and since then, uh, I and often Dr. Gordon go right next door where this ultrasound suite is and watch the screen, because when I do that, This is what I found. If you personally watch or participate with live ultrasound exam, you get a much better feel for the hip. Explain so, that. So, él dice que lo, para que ustedes, lo, sobre todo los fellows y los que se están formando, que es importantísimo hacerlo vos. O sea, entrar al, al, a la zona de ultrasonido y examinar al paciente vos con la, con la técnica y entender y hacerlo vos. Eso te da mucho más información que mandar al paciente solo y después tener un reporte. Leandro, have you ever been to the uh, into the gone and watched the real screen, or you do these yourself, or what? Leandro, vos cómo haces con esto? Lo haces vos? Se lo mandas al al ecografista? Generalmente lo maneja eh, la gente de imágenes y nos envían los informes. Pero hemos tenido oportunidad de de hacer taller y y, y ver cómo cómo se comporta el traductor y demás. So normally they will send the patient to the ecography, to the person, to the ultrasound technician. Uh, they normally read the report. They did some courses understanding the use of ultrasound, but um, they really don't know, don't go that much to the room. I would say if I... Yo quería comentar que hace poquito implementamos eh, el trabajo en conjunto, que bueno, se vio interrumpido por esto del, del COVID, pero la idea es hacer un consultorio una vez por semana, el ortopedista junto con el, el ecografista para poder atender y examinar al paciente bajo ultrasonido entre los dos. Excelente. So, Perry, they are starting to do that once a week. They go and they start, the fellows and the residents and the people are starting to work in collaboration with the technicians, as you are suggesting. But they just started that. Good, because I can tell you my understanding of what ultrasound shows for these little hips is so much better if I'm there and watch it just a little bit sometimes, and that's hard logistically to do, but watching it yourself makes it much more understandable as what you should do. And I've also found that the, the radiologist reading for the exam typically 
in my experience, overread that the hip's worse than it really is. Can you explain this, Cecilia? Sí, so esto es importante. Lo que dice Perry es que él no puede hacer hincapié lo, todo lo que ha aprendido cuando se va al ultrasonido con la, te, con la técnica, y sobre todo que en general los radiólogos, los, los, ultrason, los, te, los técnicos en ultrasonido, tienden a, a, hacer, a, a diagnosticar eh, más de lo que verdaderamente es, o sea que en general tienden a, hacer que, a decir que es, que es más una cadera inestable de lo que verdaderamente es, o sea falso positivo, digamos. Entonces es importante que ustedes, como los que hacen baby hip, que vayan con el ecografista, inclusive lo hagan ustedes y, y se involucren. And now that I've learned that, even reading like the, the, the um, permanent films, the fixed films later, I better understand looking at the films or the, the images later on uh, without being in there. So it really helps. I think the fellows doing that or anybody uh, will help them a lot better understand what you can do with the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, CC. Sí, so, básicamente dice eso, que vayan y métanse en el, en el consultorio del ultrasonido y estén con esa persona porque van a aprender una barbaridad. So, um, is Laura on? Laura Ortez? Laura? Sí, estoy acá. Yes, she's there, Perry. Okay, it's Dr. Ortez. Laura, I can't say the way you say it, so I'll call you Laura Ortez, right? Okay? <laughs> Right. Sí, Laura está bien. One week old, uh, positive right hip, Ortolani positive. Um, and so this is the coronal view, the longitudinal view, normal or abnormal? Pensás que esta, esta está impresiona a su luxada. Yeah. Subluxated, Perry. I didn't hear. Subluxated. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, wow, the way you say that is fantastic. Transverse view, I'll just explain this. There's the acetabulum, and there's the femoral head, and uh, looks so, so, uh, a concerned hip. Okay, easy one that was there. Now the, now the easy one, Dr. Ortez. This is the other hip, normal or abnormal? Ortolani positive. Esa también impresiona displásica. Yes, displastic, very. And... Here is the lateral, so this Taluxada. Uh, dislocated, sorry. <laughs> this, yes, and there's the femoral head, there's the acetabulum, and there's the growth plate. So if you use ultrasound at all to help you, this hip is Ortolani positive. I can reduce it if I get it in the right position. And this Transverse view to me is the most important view to watch to make sure in flexion, the blue femoral head eventually comes down and locates down the uh, slope of the acetabulum and doesn't get pushed posteriorly. Explain, CC. So, lo que dice que es lo que más se fija cuando hace la maniobra de reducción es el corte transversal. Entonces, la cabeza femoral, que es lo que ven ahí en azul, y el growth plate, obviamente, va a ver, van a ver cómo se reduce hacia el acetábulo. Entonces, él, para controlar la reducción, usa más el corte transversal que el longitudinal. Doctor Eric Gordon, I occasionally, we share offices close to, occasionally you go down and look at the ultrasound itself. Does that help you much, Eric? I know you go down there once in a while. Absolutely. I, I think it gives you a much better feel for the hip. I agree with you completely. Uh, Baxter Willis up in Ottawa. Agree, Perry. Uh, it helps you assess reducibility and to some extent stability. How do you want to treat this hip, Leonardo? Leandro? Leandro Fernandez. Leonardo Fernandez. I love that name. Eh, utilizaría un arnés de Pablic. Pablic, harness, Perry. 10 days old, Pavlik harness. Anybody on the faculty disagree? Paciente de 10 días. Yeah. Todos abrí, todos que piensan que es el tratamiento a elegir. Yo estoy de acuerdo con Leandro. Sí. Yes, Haría un arnés de Pavlik con controles periódicos. Pavlik oh, harness and then control follow-ups. No. Ah. Oh. Se me fresca. 
we are so thankful to Professor Pavlik from Eastern Europe. Okay, so this is uh, the hip. This is uh, the left hip. And what I did here is same hip. This is the left, this is the longitudinal view. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rotate it clockwise. See the blue arrow? Sí, ahora la rotó para que vean que okay. es como coronal, como en la radiografía. Dr. Ortez, is, it's, so the femoral head is displaced out of the very shallow socket, right? It's displaced in which directions? Inferiorly, superiorly, laterally, or medially? Can you explain that to her, Cecilia? ¿A dónde se, vos, está la cadera desplazada? ¿Sabes a dónde? Si está superior, inferior, o anterior o posterior? Leandro? Eh... Por lo que puedo llegar a ver, está un poco lateralizado y hacia superior. Lateral and superior, very. Perfecto. Excellent. Perfecto. Excellent. Okay. So this is a very dysplastic hip, and but it's orderly positive. So I think you should try Pavlik harness for a while. If it were orderly negative, sometimes I put the harness on for a, a week to 10 days to... Um, the word we call the word placate, placate to to um, because the parents already know about it and they want to try it. But I would not anticipate any positive anything good to happen if I put a pelvic carnus hip that's ortolani negative. This is not that as ortolani positive. Uh, Baxter or Eric uh, concur. We should go ahead ortolani positive with the pelvic carnus. Correct. Agree. Definitely go ahead. Fabiana, uh, Rola, uh, Rodolfo, Pavlik uh, Harness, give it a try. Pero por favor, callen los micrófonos. One week. Yes. Perry, we all agree. After 12 weeks, uh, what do you think here, Dr. Ortez, with the uh, right hip? This is the hip not bad. What's happened, good or bad? Look better? 12 weeks. Sí, eh, luce mejor, impresiona reducida. And here's the transverse view. Here's the socket. Here's the ball. Much better. Y también está okay. mejor. The bad hip, the bad hip. 12 weeks. What do, what do we think, uh, Dr. Uh, Fernandez? What do you think? Eh, siempre impresiona que está reducida también ahí. Socket, acetabulum, femoral head. Good. Sí. Yes. Sí, 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 sí. Okay, so let's watch here. So we rotate the x-ray, the CR, uh, x-ray, the ultrasound picture, and now we have the right hip, like an AP x-ray. Mm -hmm. The left, rotated. Everybody see that? It's like an AP x-ray. Reduced. Sí. Now, Ahí está uh, mostrando que se ve como la radiografía, exactamente una coronal si la rotas. We did 12 or 14 weeks of the pelvic harness. And then what what do we uh, how would the follow up uh, uh, be uh, Dr. Ortez? What's the follow up going to be later? The hip is very stable now. Been treated for 12, 14 weeks. The child is now 4 months old. So el paciente tiene ya lo trataste 3 semanas. La ecografía es esta. ¿Qué haces con el paciente ahora, después de, tres, de, tres, de 12 semanas en el arnés? Cecilia, acá hay una preguntita que dice si utilizan alguna vez una férula de fresca. Perry, do you ever use a fresca eh, slint? I have not had much opportunity, but would not be opposed to it. Fresca pillow splint. Yeah. So, dice que nunca lo usó, pero que no está, que se puede usar también, que no es, no está eh, en contra de eso. Do you like what you said, uh, Dr. Fernandez? When you Hola. Nosotros, con respecto al retiro del arnés en public, lo que hacemos es ir retirándolo a poco. Primero un descanso de seis horas durante dos semanas, después doce horas y el arnés se usa para dormir y vamos haciendo los controles a ver si la cadera sigue reducida. ¿Eso lo hacen después de las 12 semanas? 
Eric or Baxter, this is one year of age. It's a very severe dysplasia. Would you see the patient again at an x-ray later? The patient's walking now, and uh, this is a nice-looking x-ray. There's no more splinting going on. Uh, Eric, uh, just curious, or Baxter, any further follow-up? I suppose you know, that's I the... I suppose that's the art of medicine rather than the science, Perry. I probably would, but I think you have uh, a normal physical exam and a normal radiograph, so probably there's no scientific evidence that you need to see this child again, but I, I likely would, probably in two years for another Cici. radiograph. Cici, can you translate? So, so lo, lo que dice básicamente que una vez que le hiciste el arnés do, eh, tres meses, le haces el examen físico, es una cadera estable, él dice que no hay, no hay indicación científica de seguir eh, con radiografías o controlando al paciente, que él básicamente lo ve a los dos años. I would add one thing, if there's any question, follow the patient. Una pregunta, yo quisiera saber si una vez que la, que la cadera está estable y que el examen físico es eh, adecuado, si ustedes el, el arnés lo sacan de, de golpe. Okay, Perry. So, do you um, remove the RNS immediately, or is progressively? Like you start weaning down the RNS. At about 10 to 12 weeks, I, I, I with a hip that's pretty straightforward. After eight weeks of treatment full time, I start weaning for about four weeks. For this hip, it was full time for 10 or 12 weeks, and then we wean for four to four to five weeks. So, hacen lo mismo que ustedes. Hacen ocho semanas, 24/7. Y después las, las cuatro semanas las van haciendo winning down de acuerdo como hacen ustedes, progresivamente. La van sacando horas o a la noche, lo dejan solo a la noche, etc. I used to do shorter, but Colin Mosley and I talked a few times, and his point was, why not continue uh, with a, uh, a splint of some time, either, either the pelvic or you could use an ill felt or any uh, abduction splint you like. Uh, in this young age, maybe it helps. So I've now kind of done longer weaning than I used to, used to do. So, sí, lo hacen progresivo. O sea, son ocho semanas, 24, 7, y después cuatro semanas progresivo. Y después There's si el paciente tiene examen físico normal, que es estable, yeah. ya está, lo dejan, en caso del, um, del otro doctor, básicamente lo dejan, eh, lo ven al paciente otra vez, recién a los dos años. I'm una, pre una pregunta, Cecilia, queremos hacer. Si sí, en la cadera es estable, uh -huh. pero el paciente mantiene una displasia residual, ¿cambian uh -huh. en algo el tipo de seguimiento o uh -huh. es tal cual lo están describiendo? Perry, so let's say that we have this patient that you treated for eight weeks, but you can see that there's some residual displasia. Splint. Yeah, splint. Splint, splint, splint. splint. We, have, we must remember... No. The science behind splinting after you get, if you look at the ultrasound here on top, these are pretty good looking hips. There is some acetabular dysplasia. The science behind splinting or splinting here is non-existent as far as I'm concerned. And I tell the families that when I splint sometimes. If, I mean, I wouldn't splint this, but I mean, I, I, I tell the families, the science for splinting, the, almost, the real good science is almost non-existent as far as I'm concerned. Maybe. So, por ejemplo, este caso no, este caso no se hace sprint, pero si tenés alguna duda mínima, le tenés que hacer un sprint. O sea, no lo dejás así, finalmente tratado. ¿Tendrés? Nosotros le ponemos una férula que se llama Windel. Eh, Pregúntale si él la utiliza. Perry, ¿do you use the Windel splint? I didn't understand. What kind of splint? Windel, ¿cómo se escribe? Yo no. I, I, the splint I use is a soft, it's called an ill felt splint. Um, it has two uh, sort of canvas thigh cuffs and a bar between, a little strap. I think there are many ways you can splint this. I don't splint an excessive abduction though, but you can splint this all kinds of different ways. It's a bien, es esta, Cecilia. Okay. Ceci, okay. decirle que también está eh, Juan y Agustina para preguntar, eh? Perry, so we have two new members, Juan y Agustina, you can ask questions too. What, Juan? Juan? And Agustina? Yes. Okay, so everybody else on the call, there are four fellows at, uh, there are six fellows at the Garahan, and four are on the call. Correct. <laughs> Nora, 
Agustina, Juan, and Leandro. And Bibiana told me ahead of time that she and uh, Rodolfo said I should direct, we should direct our questions from Baxter, from, uh, uh, from Eric to those four individuals. So um, I, I think we can leave this unless uh, Eric or Baxter, is Teddy Slango on the call? I saw his name, Teddy Slango. Is Juan, Juan Carlos Cuto on the call? Dile que se bajaron para dejar que los residentes entren, Ceci. Oh, they, they left. Uh, I'm here, Perry. Oh, that's... Nice hearing you here. That, that sounds like Juan. That's Juan Cuto, yes, I'm here. Cuto, you, uh, do you get a chance to treat DDH? Do you use splinting uh, a bit when they're, they're young, after Pavlik Harness? Any thoughts about it? Yes. We recommend it, but take in mind that we usually uh, are treating patients with neuromuscular conditions. So it's seldom we have a case that we recommend uh, the approach for the DDH. Okay. Uh, Javier, are you on the call? I'm here. Uh, what about splinting in this situation? The question was, I think you understood it, uh, how long do you splint after you get it reduced and stabilized? Well, Javier is from the... You mean at the age of one year old? Uh, sure. Are you asking me or the, or the fellows? No, I, I, am I talking now to Juan or Javier? I'm mixed up. I'm sorry. Okay. I mute on. Bye. Juan, okay, you missed it. Uh, Javier, are you on the call? Ms. Kiho? He's not. Is um, Alex Arcader on the call? Okay, so uh, Baxter or Eric, uh, any other uh, feeling about splinting? We've done enough splinting talk. Uh, any, anything um, that we should do differently? No, and I, I agree, Perry. And, and in these younger patients that are not walking, usually in discussion with the family, if they have very mild evidence of dysplasia, I'll use a, I don't use an ill felt splint, but very similar to it, a hip abduction splint, usually at nighttime only, sometimes a little longer, but about 12 hours a day. And I agree with you. I don't think there's any evidence that it truly makes a, a, a difference, but I think families want to know that they're trying something. Dr. Gordon? I, I agree. There's not much evidence for it. In fact, I sometimes talk to families about not splinting because if you see improvement after you've been splinting, that almost commits you to long-term use of the brace. Um, and whereas if you see the, see the improvement without the splinting, it makes everybody a little more uh, comfortable. One Cece, question you, for you. Hold on. One question for you, Perry. Do you, yeah. yes. do you have any, is there any value to a plain x-ray at four months to look for dysplasia or do you rely completely on the ultrasound? I didn't go into the, that much of a detail. It's, it's, it, it, so Eric's question, and then Cecilia, you can explain to us. If you have a really bad hip that you stabilize with, an, with a Pavlik, at six months of age, I, Eric, I would get an x-ray and because some of those hips probably should be splinted at six months, but that was beyond my original plans here. Can, can you explain that, Cece, if we, we really... So, in, in aquellos pacientes que tienen una displasia severa, ellos le hacen radiografía a los seis meses. Yes, I do. And Eric, explain what you do, because I know you do. Yeah, I, I tend to make my decision on splinting based on more the plain radiograph because the ultrasound just doesn't seem to me to be as, uh, as definitive for looking for dysplasia. I've seen ultrasounds that look very dysplastic, that the plain films look very close to normal and vice versa. So, so el doctor Gordon básicamente para tomar la decisión de splinting se basa más en radiografía. Dice que es más específico en cuanto a ver la severidad de displasia. Generally speaking, there are some publications because I've reviewed them for, and they're published. They're not mine, but I've reviewed them for journals. The ultrasound is a summation of bone and cartilage. The x-ray is only osseous tissue. You will generally look better with an ultrasound 
than you do with an x-ray. And I've had cases where my ultrasound looked great at age, at three, four months, and I took an x-ray at 10 months, and I, or eight months, and I was very surprised that the bone still was dysplastic. So in that situation, probably we do some splinting, correct, Eric? Yes or no? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a judgment call. Um, yeah, see, you know, certainly, see, if you're concerned about dysplasia, you would do. I at least I would tend to do some splinting. Um, I've also seen the other situation though, because ultrasound is very technique dependent. Okay, let, let, let Cici, can problema, you explain, that? Let, let Cici Cici explain that. Para tomar una una decisión definitiva, quizás la radiografía es mejor. Porque como el ultrasonido estás viendo las partes blandas también, a veces pensás que la cadera está bien y después le haces una radiografía y si su está mucho más displásica de lo que yo pensaba. Entonces para hacer la, el, la decisión de splint o no, es mejor basarse en la radiografía como algo final, decisión final. So, now we move on. Ok, Bibiana? Ok, ok. So we have now, we go to a failed pelvic heart, which means that the pelvic wasn't a failure, but it, 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 the hip couldn't get stabilized. And then we have to do something else. So let's go to Agustina. Is it Agustina Castella? Hola, sí, acá estoy. I think that was yes. Okay. So six weeks old, three weeks in the pelvic harness, the right hip, it's Ortolani positive. And what do you see? This is a longitudinal or a coronal view. Here you have the femoral head. Here's the socket. How would you read this? Subluxated, dislocated, normal. Maybe. Aparece una cadera subluxada. Subluxated, Perry. And um, then we turn. So uh, this is still the question. So I turn. I took the picture. And I turned it so it's like an AP X-ray. It's subluxated laterally. Everybody see that? This is yes. the same picture, but I monkeyed around with it. So okay. So this is this is the right hip. All right. So it's still Ortolani positive. And if you were just treating that hip alone, would you continue with the treatment or not, Augustina? Seguís con el tratamiento y con el mismo plan, Augustina. Eh, probaría la, la estabilidad y si no tiene un buen resultado con el public, quizá habría que hacer una, una reducción cerrada de la cadera. So if it's not really stable, she would prefer to move for a close reduction. Okay, it is still Ortolani positive, and if this were the only problem, I would, with the, if you watch this with the ultrasound, here is the transverse view. It's sublaxed posteriorly. And, and flexed. So, excuse me, if you watch this with the ultrasound and it's still Orlani positive, I would continue, you could still continue to treat this, but never like, we have another hip to look at. So same same patient, the left hip is Orlani negative. So what do we see here, located or dislocated, Augustina? This is... Se ve to the view. This is... Hacia posterior, yeah, this, dislocated posteriorly, Perry. Okay, so it's dislocated laterally, and and it's going posteriorly. Everybody sees the acetabulum. Yes. So what should we do, Augustina? Continuaría con una reducción cerrada. Harness or or quit the harness and go to close reduction in OR. Quit harness and go to close reduction. Okay. Now what to do? Okay. So here's the right hip subluxated laterally. Left hip dislocated laterally. See the difference? Yeah. Now we're now it's 12, four months of age, 12 pounds. We're in the OR. So this hip is down here. The left hip is a little worse. They're both Ortolani positive or negative in the operating room. So I can get a sense of reduction in the operating room. Uh, what should I do now, Augustina? You like that? No, aparenta todavía que continúa lateralizada. No, still, an... still not good, Perry. Say that again? Still not good. Now it looks a little bit better, huh? 
Yeah, so here's a bit. Okay, here it is. Here it is. I'm just unlocated. Here it's located. They're reducible by the feel. So here is the x-ray bilateral. We did a little adductor tenotomy and we tried the closed reduction. And so we don't have arthrogram right here, but what do we think? Uh, here's triradial cartilage, triradial cartilage. What do you think of the reduction as best as you can see on this x-ray, Augustina? Aparenta estar en, en su lugar la cadera. Si bien no, no está hecha una artrografía, eh, aparenta apuntar hacia el radiado. Reduced? Yes. Do you use Hilgenreiner's line, Bibiana? Yes. So there's Hilgenreiner's line, and I find this when just you have plain x rays, you have to have something to look at and to teach. To me, the most important thing is how this feels. I try to get an x-ray to show that. And this is a pretty good AP x-ray. It's hard to get it perfect. You have to look at the operator foramen, the notch. And then I like to draw this line. And I like to imagine where the femoral head is. And the center of it should be below that line. Can you translate that, CC? Sí, básicamente asegurarse que es una buena AP pelvis para hacer antes de hacer la línea de Hilgen Reis. Cecilia, ¿no usa la arthrografía siempre? Perry, do you use arthrogram always? Okay, reduced, yes. Do you need an arthrogram? Why or why not? No, well, let's see. I tell you, I can tell you my experience, but I, that'll the answer will be on the next click. So let's. Let's go around a little bit and let's ask, well, let's ask uh, Augustina, what would you do? Any experience with this or any of the fellows, what are your thoughts about doing an arthrogram to a four month old? Feels pretty good. The arthrogram is yours to do or not to do. Can you explain that, Cece? Uh, cualquiera de los fellows, Augustina, Leandro, um, ustedes piensan que es necesario hacer un, artro un artrograma? Artrografía? Hola, buen día, soy Juan. Juan. Eh, si uno seguía por la placa, uno imagina que está centrada, más que si la siente él cuando hace la estabilidad de la cara cuando la prueba y la siente estable. Si se fija por anatomía, parecía estar centrada la cabeza, imaginando donde tendría estar la cabeza. Por lo general, la artrofía la usamos para asegurarnos eso, capaz por una cuestión de, de, de mayor certeza. So they basically, like looking at this x-ray, it looks really good. And then if you feel, you know, how you feel it when you are there, if you feel pretty comfortable, they will not do an arthrogram. But Stop. I mean, Stop. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. Okay, all right, that's good. All right, before they go to, I, 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 I okay, that's good. Uh, Baxter? Yes, I always do an arthrogram. I just was thinking about this. This would be the spot where uh, somebody in orthopedics should learn how to use an ultrasound machine and we could maybe avoid the arthrogram by bringing the ultrasound into the OR, but I do an arthrogram. Dr. Gordon? Uh, I don't. If I have a good feel of it and uh, comp I'm confident on the x-rays, then I will not. I've run into situations in the past where I've done an arthrogram and it's actually made the hip more unstable and I've run into problems. So I, I make myself, convince myself that I need it. So basicamente... Oh, uno momento, uno momento. We're going we're gonna to say goodbye to uh, Jordan Stivers, one of our hardworking residents. Thanks he's for been, helping out. Doing yeah. trauma. He's been doing trauma all weekend, and he's been up all night. And <laughs> I'm glad he came this morning, but he's going to go home and see his family. Jordan, thank you see very you. much. Thank you. Adios. Um, so um, I, I, this is a very interesting discussion for me um, because I've given these talks and um, my experience has been exactly what Dr. Gordon just said. And so I'll, show, I'll, I'll go forward and you can, you can have your own, how you want to do this. But what I have found is I had a nice feel and I have a small hip and maybe I put too much fluid in, I don't think so. I made the hip so much more unstable, I almost couldn't hold it. In one case, I couldn't hold the reduction anymore and I couldn't get the stuff to come out of the hip. I've mentioned this at national meetings and they looked at me like I was local or asked me if I was crazy or something like that. But, uh, and uh, 
I thought the person asked the question didn't know what he was talking about. But anyway, Cecilia, can you translate that? Yeah, so what Perry says is really, lo que dice Perry es bastante interesante, que con el artrograma lo puedes hacer más inestable. Y que cuando él a veces presentó en meetings internacionales, cuando dijo eso, la gente como que se le ríe, él dice, no, ¿cómo puede pasar? Pero él dice que con el artrograma corre ese riesgo de hacer una cadera más inestable. So anyway, if you want to get the artrograma, remember that, and I was, I didn't, Eric is not here with me side by side. I didn't lead Dr. Gordon. He didn't lead me. I was delighted here. Here, everybody's got their back. And Baxter, you like the arthrogram? You've not obviously had the problem I'm talking about, so maybe your technique is... Not that I can remember, but I, it's very critical not too much die, mm -hmm. like a CC or less in a small hip like this. Mm -hmm. And that's, you're talking about fluid volume now, probably, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... Um, so we didn't do it on this case. We had, okay, so, um, and let's see, we're, uh, who was, Agostino, you were talking about this, and you said you liked the reduction, correct? Is that yeah. right, Agostino? Wasn't eh, Agostino eh, talking? Ante lo posterior se la ve centrada. Yeah, she likes it. Okay, no so centered. we're gonna, so I'm gonna put the cast on and let's go, for, and it worked well. Do you do CT or MRI afterwards, Augustino, to check the anterior posterior reduction? Acá solemos hacer tomografía computada para eh, cerciorarse del, de la reducción posterior. CT, Barry. CT, okay. Uh, CT, I use get CT uh, and get now I get MRI and uh, once you get it, you love it. So this is the same little patient uh, right after cast is on. We do not have MRI in the ORs. Some people do, we don't. But if you look here, you can see so nice ephemeral heads, acetabulum. And if we look on this, this is, anti, this is posterior, this is anterior, right thigh, left thigh. The reductions look pretty good to you, Augustina? See. I have CT too if I need it, but this is, I prefer, I can, I do this, they don't have to sedate the child, they just secure the cast and they do a couple shots and it works well. I, I like it confirms. So Augustina, you usually do those three-dimensional imaging in your hospital with a CT after you do close reduction, correct? Sí, solemos hacerlo post reducción. Any other comments from uh, anybody? Uh, is Alex Arcater on the line? Anybody? I got it. Alex sent an email out, and he's having a hard time getting on. Damn it! Okay. Um, all right. Barry, I, th I think it's critical that the uh, trainees realize you have to have an imaging study after the hip spike goes on to confirm your reduction, just as you've illustrated here. Critically important. Sometimes you're surprised that you get a posterior subluxation or even dislocation, even though you think. Uh, it's in the joint on the AP x-ray. Did the fellows hear that? Uh, Laura, Agostino, Juan, and Leandro, what he was saying is this x-ray can look perfect, but this hip might be posteriorly displaced that you can only appreciate with the CT. The head might be back here someplace. Okay, we will get on. All right. So here we go. And... Um, Here's your case a little bit later on, Augustina. Um, we are now at eight months. Femoral heads are ossifying, correct? Femoral heads are ossifying, Augustina? You see? Yes? No? Yes. Parece hipoplásico el núcleo y está aparenta un poco displásica la cadera todavía. It looks like it's still displastic, Barry. Yes, and I would splint this, splint this, splint this. This is a hip, this is that we're done. We've had, I don't know, uh, maybe 12 weeks of casting and um, this hip needs splinting and actually the hip would splint, the hip has a full abduction, very stability, but this is a hip that I would splint a lot. This is after cast is all done. We need to follow till normal. We go to the next case. So, um, Harry, can I just ask a question? With the advent of uh, concern about general anesthetic in very young children, you have a failed pavlic harness treatment. At what age will you initiate uh, closed reduction and casting? 
Uh, excellent question. So we'll just go back. To, it's, it was set up in this one here. Um, so I, I said it here before. Um, so what I do is I've talked and talked with our anesthesiologist about safety for anesthesias for, and now the concern is about anything putting the child to sleep for the brain. And I usually don't go for a close reduction till you're at least 11, 12 months of age, excuse me, 11 or 12 pounds and maybe four or five months. They tell me for anesthesia safety for the, for the anesthetic agents, the child should be 52 weeks old from gestation. So that means a full-term baby plus three months. I don't know about the safety in the brain, but I usually, for size of child, found and went back and looked. And I don't like to put kids to sleep or under 10 pounds. I just don't. I haven't. Can you explain that, Cece? Sí, so es una pregunta importante. ¿Cuándo, ¿Cuándo te sentís segura de poner al paciente eh, en anestesia general? Entonces, generalmente, si no tiene más de 20 pounds, que son como, eh, no sé cuántos kilos son 20 pounds. How old, how old, Barry? Uh, I, I go, I, I, it's usually about four months. Uh, yeah, cuatro meses. Cuatro meses de adulto. Let's hear, but Baxter, you must have some answer to Baxter. Ask a question. What, is your, what, what do you think, Baxter? You asked the question. I'm sure you have something yeah, to think about. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I know there's, there's concern now, certainly in North America, about putting uh, children, say, under six months of age for theoretically an elective procedure. Uh, just because of uh, concern about uh, effective anesthetic agents on the developing brain. So that's why I asked the question. And I don't know whether we have the right answer. What are you doing in your hospital in general, Baxter? Well, I, I think four months would probably be the youngest. I know I have several partners who would wait, wait until the child was six months of age. Eric? You know, I've probably waited uh, about your criteria, about three to four months of age post uh, normal gestation. Um, I have another question too that, that may or, you may or may not want to address. In your x-ray there, it looked like you're starting to get some AVN on your left subluxated hip. What effect does your thoughts about AVN have on um, whether or not you're going to brace or, or your approach to it? Um, if it's true AVN and it's stiff, this was not, then I don't do much bracing when they're stiff. We're going to get to a case that's talked about what you're talking about. So, so esa es una pregunta bastante importante. Una de las complicaciones, obviamente, es la necrosis avascular. Entonces, eh, el doctor Gordon dijo que parecía como que estaba haciendo un poco osteonecrosis y cambiaba eh, la estrategia en cuanto al, al, al public o la, el, el brace. Dijo que lo que hacen es tratar de no darle tanta abducción. This one remodeled would maybe a little, very nice, Eric, would maybe a little bit of type 1 AVN, but it was never stiff. So in that situation, I would brace, brace, brace. If it's stiff, I watch the brace. We'll get to that kind of case. Um, and actually, this patient remodeled quite nicely with time. I could go over the detail. It, it, it actually have turned pretty good. So Barry, may I ask you a question? Barry, may I ask you a question regarding the AVN? Yes, that's Juan Carlos Cuto, right? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. Juan Carlos Cuto, for those in North yes. who might be on, don't, don't, is, is one of our uh, great friends. Uh, you work at the, the, what's the institute in Buenos Aires, Juan Carlos? Fleni. Fleni is a foundation where we have a, a um, the Department of Neuroorthopedics. Mm -hmm. The 95% of our patients are syndromic genetics or neuromuscular conditions. Uh, Perry, just in case of uh, AVM plus dysplastic hip, which will be your priority? Because one of, of the early signs reg regarding to the AVM following the, the, the DDH uh, treatment is uh, the delay on the specific nucleus, but when you have both situations, which will be your approach and which will be your priority? Thank you. We will sh talk about that in a couple cases to come here. It's coming up on the screen. We're not quite there. 
Yes, I will add, let's put that question and we answer a little bit later we got another, when we have that problem. Okay, so this is a, a similar case. This is a very young patient. Again, I waited Baxter till the, I think the child was five months old. This was a harness that didn't work. And um, if you look at this one, uh, is it Juan Orano? One? Sí, estoy en okay. Right hip looks located or dislocated? No es un buen, un buen IP. La derecha parece que lo parece que right es entrada. Parece que sí. Right hip looks good. It's not a great X-ray. Don't don't. This is the best you get. So don't uh, don't be too critical. <laughs> Tell him again. La izquierda. La izquierda está luxada. Yeah, dislocated yes. left hip. Dislocated okay, left hip and the right hip is beginning to ossify. Okay. Mute mute the microphones, please. Thank you. Keep on going, Bert. Bibiana, are you saying something? No, no, no. it was something with the waiting room. We're trying okay. to keep Alex, people. Okay. People are still trying to get in, you know. I know they are. Alex Arcator, we tried to get him in. If anybody get Alex in, that would be great. I've wrote him a lot of emails about joining us. Okay. All right. Uh, there's room for him to join, so I don't see him in the waiting list, but there are some people that are still, you know, just saying iPhone or. They are not with a username. Yeah, that or they just got uh, tired of waiting and they disappeared. Okay. So the right hip is right there. Would you agree with that one? Left hip, the femoral head is going to be right there. Okay, one. Yes. See? Say yes. See? Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we put him to sleep. And if you didn't like the x-ray on the left, you're going to hate the x-ray on the right one. Okay? You hate the x-ray. It's terrible. Yes. Okay. But we have to do something to showcase. So there's the proximal femurs one. Okay. There's the, head. There's the head. Okay, so what do you think? Looking reasonably okay? Eh, la sí. corta, la cabeza, la derecha parece un poco más alta. La izquierda, la corta, la línea de Reiner. What's the Pero, most important question you want to ask me to go with this X-ray one? ¿Qué es lo que más importante le preguntarías para to tomar una decisión? ¿Cómo siente la cadera? How do you feel the hip? Fantastic question. It feels very orderly positive. It's stable. Excelente, tu pre, tu respuesta, tu it's got a fairly good safe zone. It felt very, very good. So you need to keep getting an x-ray till you can see something you can understand and or get an arthrogram. I decided not to do that. Let's move on. So I thought it was seated. Do you agree, Juan? Seated. Yeah, seated. Okay. Okay, now think of the... Um, how, how do I uh, how do I show a picture? I got something in my hands here. How do we get me back so I can show my face? So I can show my example here. You just show me there. We see you, Barry. You see me? Yeah, of course. Do you, do you see the model? Put it a little bit higher, closer to your face. Yeah, there. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. All right. So one, these patients typically have a lot of antiversion. Okay, tell me the position you're going to put this hip in in the cast so it's stable. Si tiene mucha antiversión femoral, ¿cómo lo pon pones la cadera en el en el en el arnés? Flexión, abducción y rotación interna. ¿Cómo? Flexión. Flexión, flexión. Flexión. 60 grados de ABD o 60 70 grados de ABD, depende del rango. 60 degrees of abduction. Abduction. Uh, rotation interna. Uh, internal rotation. I agree. Why internal rotation one? Dice para, que lle sí. para llevar la cabeza hacia posterior, si está anteversa, para llevar la acetábulo. So that's the way, because it's anteversa, so you do internal rotation, you, you take that femoral head posteriorly. Flexion, internal rotation, abduction. Dr. Salter popularized this 40 years ago. It's very easy if you're holding the hip to let this happen. Okay. Everybody see that? Here we go. So cast applied, reduced okay one? No. Based on what I drew there. Juan, this is- Hacer la reducción de nuevo. You can tell me it looks we need, terrible. We need to redo the reduction again, Perry. Fantastic. 
I mean, you do this, and you you know, even if you have an arthrogram, you still have to hold the hip right. We just this wasn't something we did 40 years ago. This just happened a few months ago. And you you know, the arthrogram doesn't necessarily tell you everything, but now you got the cast on, and everybody's saying, when can we get out of this operating room? And you look at this and you try to talk yourself into something's good. It's not good. So reduction, not okay, Juan, you did a fantastic job. So now we put it into Juan's position and I look at the camera again. And so you want to flex, okay, abduct. But remember, if you let this thing externally rotate, which is what happened here, it subluxes anteriorly. So we're going to internally rotate like, one, we should add him with us on the case. Now, what do you think, Juan? Ahora sí, se reducido. Okay, flexion, abduction, oops, and internal rotation. Dr. Salter popularized this, and I sometimes forget the internal rotation. That's why you fail in the pelvic harness, too. You got to learn how to adjust the straps to get internally rotated. So here is that. Now, what else do you want to see, Juan, to go with your nice reduction? What's the other image you want? You want CT? CT, acá sí. So what do you think there? Está reducido. Ah, beautiful, hey? Okay, so I mean, what do you do the CT immediately when the patient comes out of the bar? Uh, we have to, we have no CT. I don't think Eric or uh, Baxter, you guys have CT. We don't have, back, in our aura, we don't have CT, do, do we, Eric? No. But you do it oh. the same day, correct? No, 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 no. I would do this within the same same day. Yes, same day. Yes, not ten days. We do have CT available. It's just very high radiation doses. So, or uh, MR, MR uh, CC. Uh, if if you've got MR available, they can go in and, as Perry said, they just stabilize the cast. They don't need to sedate or uh, anesthetize the kid. So, from our recovery room into the MR suite, get a couple of images that show this, and we're done. Some of the places in the world now have MR in the OR. You have to move them into another room, but we don't have that. Um, so did you like this? What do you think, Juan? Good or bad? Está bien. Very good. Okay, this is posterior. Okay, okay, good. Here's your cast change at five weeks. Uh, yes. uh, Cecilia, yo tengo una pregunta para yeah. hacer. Yep. We have a question, Barry. Si en, el, el, en el momento de, la, de entrar de, de nuevo a hacer la reducción, él evalúa la posibilidad de hacer algún gesto quirúrgico extra, este, contemplando que ya se reluxó la cadera y falló el primer intento. Yeah, that's a very good question. So, basically, when you, when you show the case of that patient that you you failed with the reduction, would you go and do any something additional, something more aggressive? <laughs> That's the last thing I would do. <laughs> that thing, no. So basically you realize that the position of the hip was bad, was not really doing internal rotation, but you realize that. Yes, I must accept, I must be humble, ask for the cast saw, take the cast off, uh, don't bitch at anybody, uh, gently feel the hip, hold it again, maybe hold it yourself, talk everybody into putting on a nice spica, and uh, grin and bear it, and that's part of the that's part of life. Say that, please. Yes. Eso es importante porque están to, todos van a estar frustrados porque terminaste de hacer el espica y hay que sacarlo todo. Entonces, lo mejor que puedes hacer es sacar el espica, volver a posicionarlo vos y vos sostenés la cadera. Y generalmente funciona. Dice que lo último que haría es hacer algo más agresivo. Eh, no sé cómo abrirla o no sé. Ceci, ¿vos una pregunta? Sí. Y en ese caso es que se reluxó, ¿no le haría una ortografía para contar? Más que nada cuando ves con el yeso, capaz que con el yeso no ves tan bien la articulación uh -huh. o porque tapa un poquito la imagen del yeso y con la ortografía capaz que te ayuda un poquito a ver más la silueta de la, de la articulación. Perry, would you have considered doing an artrogram? No. no. I put the last thing I do. Ok. Because the feel is so important. Let's show a couple more cases. I, just, I keep going forward. Perry sigue insistiendo que lo más importante es cómo vos sentís la cadera. And I'd be glad to ask Eric or, or, or Baxter uh, if an arthrogram would change what's... I'll ask Eric as I always say. Would you an arthrogram help you here, Eric? You know, it wouldn't. I mean, I think you've already figured out what's going on here and you just need to fix it. 
Yeah, the point is this leg was in the wrong position and I could, we could see it after we got the cast on. The leg was externally rotated. You can see the femur here. Same. You see, and now it's changed here. And, that's, and, you, and then if you don't understand that, I mean, if you don't believe that, reduce it and take it in a little abduction from flexion down to extension with the hip internally rotated and with the hip externally rotated. And there's a big difference. You're much more stable for most of these young kids with the hip internally rotated as you extend it. Please explain, CC. So, lo, lo, lo más importante era que estaba por, posicionando mal la cadera. Lo más importante es hacer la rotación interna. Okay, so we move on. So here we go. Your cast change one. What do you like it? You like the cast? Was it one? Well, yeah, one. Here's the cast change. Like it? Good. Here sí. the child is at one year post op. What do you think, Juan? Sí, está, está reducida la cadera, un poco displásico el techo. Uh, y el yeah. núcleo un poco hipoplásico, pero está en su lugar. I'll try one more time. Javier Mesquijo, are you on the line? Third time, I want to ask again. Juan Carlos, I would, Juan Carlos Cruz, I would say that you would think this should be splinted. I do. Well, we are getting back to the, to the concept of why the, nu the ossific nucleus is delayed, mm -hmm. smaller comparative with the right one. Uh, my concern will be about the previous report about which kind of treatment and the agronomic position that that hip have been stabilized. Even though this is plastic, I, I feel that if the range of motion is adequate, I will try to keep it with some kind of braces, but part time. Barry, do you hear me? There you go. Hold on. I totally agree with what Juan just said. And just to, and then I'll ask the last question. Yes, I do. Smile. Please get. We'll get to it later. But there was a guy named O'Brien who did a fellowship in Mike Millis, and then he went back to Ireland. Unfortunately, he has died. But he has a publication, and in there he looks at the growth plate. Here it is, and the Harris growth arrest line after DDH treatment. If you look carefully, there's a Harris growth arrest line here. There is one here. And this hip is actually very much alive without any AVN. I would splint it. So Cecilia, explain that, please. Well, can you say that again, Perry? Sorry. Okay. The, uh, this is the growth plate. Yep. There's a Harris growth arrest line right here, if you look carefully. Mm -hmm means this is very healthy. There's a Harris gross arrest line right here. We'll show it more in next cases. This hip is actually growing faster than this one is, and it's ossifying. So to address the question of any AVN here, I think this is a very good sign that this hip is healthy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Cece. So básicamente, puede estar la pregunta, no tiene osteonecrosis, pero como vos ves, en los dos fémures tienen el Harris arrest, que lo tiene normal en las dos, tanto en la cadera derecha como en la cadera izquierda. So, a pesar de que se ve un poco más hipoplásico, él no tendría concerns de que estoy haciendo una osteonecrosis. And to answer one's question, and somebody asked, I would splint this just because I was taught to do that uh, decades ago, and I haven't, uh, get, can't get it on my brain, and I would splint this till this almost looks normal, or to the parents say, we can't stop your splint, we can't stand your splinting anymore. Go ahead. So, él, él haría, él consideraría en este paciente hacer un splint hasta que se vea el roof mejor, como dijiste Juan, el, el, el techo está un poco displásico todavía. O hasta Juan, que los padres digan, no quiero saber más nada con este splint. Juan Carlos Cuta made another comment, which I think is key. And this exam right here and the subsequent exams, to me the most important thing on my physical exam is, what's the most important thing that hip is stable? Let's go to Alora Ortez. The most important part of the physical examination that you do, not watching it, <coughs> to tell you have a stable hip. Can you answer, ask that, CC? Eh, Laura, ¿qué es lo más importante para vos pensar que la cadera es estable o no en el examen físico? What does the pediatrician do to see if they have a, a dislocated or located or stable or unstable hip? Who, who, Perry? Okay, if you want to see if a, hip, the, a sign of hip instability at any age, 
in a growing child, on physical examination, what range of motion will be limited with hip instability for hip like this? What motion might be limited? It's not, but what would be the first sign of hip instability that you can pick up by checking range of motion on this little child? Entonces, ¿qué buscas en el rango de movilidad de la cadera para pensar que esa cadera es inestable? Would it be flexion, extension, adduction, abduction? Yo no sé la respuesta, Juan. Oh, would no, it, yeah. Which range of motion would be, if we're unstable? Maybe abduction? 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 Less abduction? So let's see, I think we're, it's, it's Juan, who's talking, Juan talking or Dr. I'm, ¿Quién habló? ¿Agustina? Fue Laura, pero es la deducción. Ok, so what did you guys say? Less abduction? Limited abduction? Limitación, limitación en la abducción? Say something, we move on. Say yes. something. Somebody... Yes, Let's that's what they said, very limited abduction. Yeah, yeah, and Juan Carlos Couto asked the question, a hip that's unstable, the most sensitive thing you can pick up at any age, particularly in a neuromuscular hip, CP hip, have they begin to lose their abduction. Mm -hmm. Little DDH cases can too, but it's very unusual. This case I would think would be very, but I, that's what I look at the hip and the only thing I really check besides the x-ray is their passive abduction. Particularly important when they're three or four years of age, older than this, and you're beginning to concern about the acetabulum. Uh, Can you say that, uh, sí, pero lo más importante es eso, sobre todo en los 3, 4 oh. años, si hay limitación de la abducción, ahí tenés que pensar que estás con una cara displásica. Eric, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Willis, your exam following up on this child besides the x-ray for the next few years, would any particular thing you look at? An exam? Exactly. A abduction. How much abduction they have versus the normal hip. Yeah, abduction is very important. Also, Trendelenburg. Mm. So here we have, so is this one, I think this is, I can't remember who's it, maybe Dr. Tess. So now we, I, I like to develop here very nicely. I would say this isn't perfect yet, and I would probably see the child again in a couple of years. But I think this is a very nice outcome to date. Everybody agree? We can move on. What do you think? Uh, who was talking about this one? Uh, Dr. Ortez? You like what you see? Yes, it's much better. It's Ooh, going nice. uh, well. Well said, well said, okay. <laughs> All right, so here, here. Very, very, yes. very regarding, regarding the last image, even though that the x-ray looks nicely, I will tell the parents that the end of the ossification will be end after the poverty group. So until that moment, 100% no one can still for sure, definitely that they had, haven't suffered any kind of a vascular degree, a vascular necrosis degree. Do you want to translate that into Spanish, CC, for the people to understand the... Sí, benefit? como no. <laughs> que si bien la, la radiografía impresiona muy bien, eh, publicaciones y la experiencia de, de, de muchos han demostrado que hasta el final de la madurez ósea, no podemos tener certeza de que no haya habido algún grado de sufrimiento eh, por isquemia, por una injuria vascular que altere la, la, la congruencia. Entonces la recomendación es decir, a, al momento del brote puberal, tener un control radiográfico. So he's saying that although the x-ray looks great, you cannot really have a hundred percent sure that you did not have any any minimal osteonecrosis on that femoral head. So the last decision or the last proof that you did not develop any last femoral, uh, necrosis of the femoral head is basically when they start in the puberty. So maybe have an x-ray at 12 or 13 years old. Do you agree, Perry? Concur. Concur, yes. Yeah, concur, exactly, congruente. Yeah, I would get it, I would, I probably told this mother to bring the child back when they're eight years old. Sí, eso, totalmente lo que dijeron ustedes, chicos. And I must say the follow-up now is much more than I did 35 years ago. I just watch things closer. Okay, close reduction will help for FMRI. So um, 
Uh, uh, let's see, whose turn is it? Augustino, quickly tell us what you see here. Eight months old, which hip has it got a problem? Tiene la cadera izquierda eh, luxada, lateralizada. Okay, what's going to be about the range of motion that's going to be different, uh, Augustina? Rango movilidad. Tener una limitación en la ABD y seguramente tengo una discrepancia de longitud con una maniobra galiasi positiva. Galiasi positive, um, limitation in the abduction. Perfecto, the perfecto. A galiasi. Limited abduction, uh, very nice, very nice. Uh, got a short thigh here, subluxated, a little bit limited. Okay, what do you want to do now? Ortolani positive in the orb with limited abduction. And your treatment's going to be what, Augustina? Can you explain that to her? Augustina, ahora que hacemos en el OR? Eh, probaría la estabilidad en el quirófano con una reducción cerrada. Close reduction in the OR. And the, ab and the abduction is a little limited. Uh, what can we do? ¿Qué puedes hacer con la limitación de la abducción? Ortolani positive, but a little limited abduction. So what might we do here? Debería probar el, el ángulo de seguridad que tengo para estabilizar la, la cadera. Exactly. She just said what you just saw, Barry, the safe zone. Okay, so we have, there's a normal safe zone. Everybody should be familiar with this. Okay. And this one's a little, this child has a little bit of a, a narrow safe zone. So the abduction is a little limited. Uh, what could we do, uh, Augustina Castella, to make it a little more abduction and safe for the hip? ¿Qué podemos hacer para que, yeah, sorry. Habría que hacer una tenotomía de los aductores para lograr un mayor ángulo de, de seguridad. Tenotomy on the adductors, Perry. Okay, safe zone narrow, so we did a little adductor and then made us a little more safe zone abduction, but we still should be careful. So let's do an arthrogram. So the, so the, the, the reduction is confirmed with the arthrogram. You remember, you feel, you, the most important thing is your feel. And you've already made your mind up back here that this hip's probably okay, reduce close, okay? X-rays confirm. So we do the adductor tenotomy, and maybe I don't know what we did first, and here's the arthrogram. Can you explain that again, Cecilia? That you sí, básicamente haces la tenotomía de los aductores y después confirmas que puedes hacer la reducción con el arthrograma. So we, we look at this, here's the capsule, here's the labrum, the arrows are off a bit, the dipole, and the reduction felt good, is the arthrogram confirm or okay with a closed reduction, uh, Augustina, or does it tell you something different? What should we do now? El arthrograma te confirma que tenés reducida la cadera. ¿Querés hacer algo más? En, en esa imagen parecería que está reducida. It looks good on the picture, Barry. Okay. So we put it in a cast, and then they looked in the cast. What do you want to get after you get the, uh, you want a CT scan after the cast, uh, Augustina? Sí. Okay, so there's the arthrogram. Here's an MRI, same day. So here's the back, there's the, la there's the acetabulum. Here's the femoral head. Continúa luxada hacia posterior, habría que hacer un recambio de yeso en quirófano. We need to rechange, it's still a little bit subluxated posteriorly, you need to go up to the OR and use it again. Well, the patient is awake and it's down in the, in the it's, it's six, what, what, what should we do? We should what? I'm joking. <laughs> we should take the cast off right away, Augustina? Sí, habría que recambiarlo Yes. Okay. So Dr. Willis talked about this before. You can have a very good looking x-ray here. And if you really, Look carefully, you can be posterior subluxated. Not good for development, and it may even make it hard on circulation of the femoral head on this. So this can be very, very, I think, helpful. Um, Eric Baxter, uh, you know, do you see this six hours after you woke up from this? Um, I don't, and we, and we, you know, we're going to take the cast off then, go there the next day. They, what, 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 what do you like to do then, Eric? 
I know you would have be my appro approach. I'd go ahead and take the cast off. You know, you could do it the next morning. You could do it then, um, or and go back the next morning and give it a try. Or alternatively, if you really feel like this is your best cast, you can plan on an open reduction at the time. Can you explain what he said, Cece? Sí, so básicamente puedes ir al día siguiente a la mañana y reducirlo, sacar el cast, sacar el el yeso y volver a reducirla. Eh, básicamente eso. Puedes esperar hasta el otro día de la mañana. Baxter, have you had occasion where you looked at the uh, CT and you say, or the MR, and you say, uh, I can do better if we hold the cast, I can maybe make this, or if you had the occasion, you say, it's the best we can do. What, which way have you gone on these? Again, it goes back to uh, the feel when you did the close reduction, how important that is in terms of stability of the hip and what, what, you, what you felt. Um, on probably 50% or more of the occasions, I just chalk this up to my inability to hold the hip where I want it. One of the things that you don't want to do, though, is abduct the hip beyond 55, 60 degrees with the thought that that's going to keep or reposition the femoral head in the acetabulum. So it's very important, your clinical examination when you reduce these, this hip. And as Eric said, if it's very, very unstable, then that may sway me to say, okay, uh, rather than just try another closed reduction, we're going to wait a few days or a week and do an open reduction. So, básicamente, lo más importante, obviamente, es lo que vos sentís de la cadera. Entonces, por ejemplo, lo, nunca trates de llegar a la deducción de más de 50 grados, eso ya sería demasiado. Y si vos pensás que es muy inestable y no puedes reducir, a lo mejor esperar unos días y después hacer una reducción abierta. Cece likes dogs. She has a wonderful dog. Is that your dog, Cece? No, that was not Windsor. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, I just want to also ask uh, excellent comments that my partners are making. Uh, Mark Miller is one of our great young partners in Puya Hoisenzada. Are you guys on at all? They both had OR things, and Mark was taking care of the family today. Uh, did, did Alex Arcator ever get on? Okay. No, so, no, but Dalia Sepulveda is with us. D uh, Dalia. D Dalia, are you there? Yes, Barry, I'm here. Uh, Finally, I got in. <laughs> okay, so next time we I'm want, sorry, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't, don't know. Be so really do not be sorry. No, We're sorry. Very unstable internet. I, I was asking why, after the arthrogram, you did not take a picture in internal rotation. Uh, because sometimes Before you cast. It's a good question, but sometimes the brain doesn't, you know, do everything. Did you see the case before this? We talked about Dahlia. No, I got it at the last, okay. and I was also asking myself a question about the last X-ray. I'm sorry, I don't want you to lose on and go back. No, no. Okay, I just let me just. Okay, we showed a case before in which I didn't internally rotate the leg in a spica. And I realized that on the table, and I had to take the cast off and accept humility and change the cast with inter rotation. Did you miss that part? Yes, I did. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. No, inter, we were, and we had to actually had the, the specimens here. Can you see yes. that? Yes. Anniversion is a big part of this, and I think you have to internally rotate for a maximal stability. Is that your point, Dahlia? Yes, and, and I thought that in this case, before I put the cast on, uh, I should have uh, I had a, an artogram in internal rotation, so I, I was able to decide if it was ready for the casting or not. I would not wait until the next day for the MRI or the CT scan. Uh, okay, so this is in the OR, and they put the, yes, yeah, and I, I don't I, and so they went to the OR and they so we we saw this. They may have extra rotated it too much. Uh, oh, to answer your question, the best I know is the cast was changed the next day. Can you mute if you're not talking? Is somebody trying to say something? No? No, no. Okay, so here we are, very nicely reduced. And who was talking about this? Um, uh, Augustina? No. Yes, Augustina. I think it was Augustina. 
So what do you think now, Agustina? Que esta es una reducción congruente, una cadera congruente. What's your upper age of uh, close reduction that you would attempt uh, uh, Rodolfo or uh, Bibiana, uh, Sergio, Daniela, Jaime? What would be the oldest patient you would go for close reduction? ¿Cuál sería el paciente de la edad máxima que vos tolerarías hacer una reducción cerrada? 13 months. Uh, what, okay. what would be your plan? Uh, Bibiana, Rodolfo, Sergio, Sergio Innocente, Rodolfo, Gochenecki, Bibiana, De La Russo. Sí, creo que es posible una reducción. Yeah, he, he will go and try to do a close reduction. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anybody want to express uh, limits in age? This is 13 months old. Uh, Baxter? I'll go, I'll go up almost to uh, 18 months, Perry, if, if I can get an easy closed reduction. Eric? So probably 18 months is about the oldest that I would uh, really try a closed reduction. Now, having said that, what happens if you're 21 months old, you go to the operating room for an open reduction, and it just falls in and it looks stable. I would continue with closed reduction myself and I've had that happen, Eric. So I think if it's ordinal, again, 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 I'll say it. Don't make your mind up based just on imaging and what's in the book or in your head. Examine the hip, feel it, feel it, feel it. And if you suddenly find something that's different, a closed reduction in my estimation is probably far better than most anybody's surgery in the long run comparing patients. Can you say that? Comparing one versus the other. Sí, sí, lo, lo más importante, otra vez vuelvo a hacer hincapié en cómo sentís la cadera. Entonces, siempre tenés que ver cómo la sentís. La sentís muy inestable, la sentís estable. Eso es lo más importante, más si bien que la radiografía. O sea, es, es lo que vos sentís. Ok. Now, armed with all that great information, uh, Dr. Fernandez, what do you want to do with this? Lana, Leandro. Eh, eh, sí, yo intentaría una reducción cerrada y, y no es muy, me parece que no está muy alta la cadera, podría, podría funcionar una reducción cerrada. He just yeah. said exactly what you just put there, Perry. The feel, the feel, the feel. And that's what he does. Nice feel like that, right, Leandro? Say sí. Sí, lo que sentís, Leandro. La sentís que se reduce. The feel of the stability. So, okay. So here we got this, Leandro. We feel, we like it. The feel is so important. What else do you want to do, Leandro? Arthrogram or not? Okay, I think in this kind of patient or the 18 month old or the 13 month old, this is 13. You'd have to have a really good looking arthrogram to accept this. So what do you think uh, the arthrogram, Leandro? Me parece que está bien, que está reducida la cadera, que está centrada. Sí, sí, I didn't understand him. Tell me. He, he says it looks really good. And there's a question here about does anybody of the faculty uh, use any type of traction in those patients between 12 and 18 months old before close reduction? Baxter? I used to, but uh, stopped it about 25 years ago. I don't use it anymore. Eric? No, I, I have not. And I saw you use it on a few patients earlier in my career and was not able to convince myself these children rolling around in bed made any difference. Uh, Bibiana? No, no, no lo usamos más. They don't use it anymore. I think it does some good, but what happened was I would see patients in my office and I had a fair amount of experience and I would tell them about traction. And no matter what my reputation, the minute I mentioned traction, 
they would kind of be very polite, leave and go see somebody else who I thought was <laughs> far less experienced, maybe capable than I was. And there was a message there, stop traction. Can you explain that, CC? Sí, eso básicamente lo dejó de hacer porque los pacientes se rehusan a que le hagas tracción. Pero nadie de los panelistas lo está usando, inclusive. Pero ellos, lo, cuando lo usaban, lo hacían como outpatients, porque nosotros lo dejamos de usar porque acá había que hacerlo como pacientes ingresados y, bueno, no podemos disponer de esas camas. Yeah, so, Bernie, where did you do the reduction? Where did you try the reduction? In the OR? My, tra my reduction? The traction, the traction, sorry. The traction would, uh, if, if they could, uh, there was 10 days in the hospital or three or four weeks at home. Sí, pero los dejaba, Viviana los dejaba tres, cuatro semanas con tracción. Sí, 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 puede ser, pero por eso no lo hacemos más. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the, the same, they, they are, that's the reason why they don't do it anymore. It's too much of a harder, huh? a hassle. What do you think uh, here, Leandro? Fernandez. ¿Me puede, sí, ¿me puede repetir? ¿Qué, qué ves en la, en la resonancia? Parece que, parece que están reducidas las caderas, sí. They look reduced, Perry. Good. And, and, uh, I... y, la cadera, y la cadera izquierda tiene un núcleo más pequeño. The left, the left, the left hip has a smaller ossification, nucleus of ossification. Very yeah, that's the, that's the dislocated one. See it? Yeah. Esa era porque la que, era la que estaba luxada. Okay, and we're following along, and this, this, this works, and we will follow this uh, for a long, long time. There's a growth of rest line here. This is growing like crazy. Okay, let's move. So this, so I think we've, we've just about wiped out this topic. One more, one more. Okay, one more. Okay, here we go. So this is a patient um, that you're going to talk about, um, Juan, and so uh, bilateral what? Bilateral dislocation, you agree? Dislocation bilateral. Juan. Juan. Juan Juan Arano. Sí, perdón. Okay. Dislocated both sides. Ambas. Yes, bilateral. Sí, okay, dislocated both sides. Yes, Juan? No? Mm -hmm. Sí. Yes. Okay. All right. So we put them asleep and it's they're kind of orderly positive. It's, it's a tricky reduction. What do you think of the reduction here, Juan? There's Hilgenreiner's line. You don't sí, están, trust them. Está, no están bien reducidas. La izquierda está un poco más alta. No sé si entra bien. No acorta bien. Más próxima al Hilgenreiner. The left one doesn't look good, Perry. So what can we do to make it look better, Juan? ¿Qué hacemos entonces para, hacer, para ponerla mejor? Eh, you're a big strong podría, person, you're an orthopedic surgeon and you ought to be able to get this hip to reduce my gosh what are you going to no, do si no reduce cerrada hay que hacer una reducción abierta if you cannot do it close we have to open it oh <laughs> wow. anybody can do anybody can operate but it takes somebody with real finesse to get the hip right come on what 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 do you think they tried to do i agree with you on what do you think they tried to do to make this work So what's the best position of stability for a dislocated hip? Adduction or abduction to keep it reduced? Do you say that, Cecilia? Para mantenerla estable, ¿qué, qué preferir hacer? E, abducción o aducción? Abducción. Abduction, Perry. Okay, so hips are located. No, no, it's not good. Very narrow safe zone, okay? So... If we try a closed reduction, we got to do more abduction, you said, if we're going to do a closed reduction, Juan? Más abducción, ¿no, Juan? Dijiste. Eh, sí, siempre viendo el margen de seguridad. If, it, if, if we are working on the safe zone, we can do abduction. Okay, and then we do an internal rotation. Okay, and it's tricky for the little hips to keep pushing these hips. Be careful, be careful. Be careful. Remember... 60 years ago, 
in all the textbooks, they would tell you to put this in a frog abducted position. I'll show you that cast. Be careful when you push these little hips. So what kind of tissue is up here, Juan? What is this tissue? Is it cartilage, bone? What kind of tissue is up here that I'm circling around? What kind of tissue? Capsula? What? Mm, capsula? No no, 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 the capsule is here. What's here? Cartilage? Sí. Bone? Yes. Cartilage. Sí. Cartilage. Soft. Yeah, yeah, it's soft. Look at all, can you read English here? Look at the soft cartilage. Okay. So be careful. It's, this is what it is. Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all cartilage. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And it's subject. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Marcella, for making these beautiful Spanish slides. Everybody understand? Be careful. So they kept casting and casting, okay? And they put the cast like this. See all that abduction one that you did? I mean, I did. Look at that. Bad. Look at the legs externally rotated. Bad. <laughs> That's a frog position. I don't know what you call the frog position in bonus aries, but don't do it. Sí, <laughs> rana. Okay. Well, they persisted. Okay. Bad, bad, bad. Not good. Okay. Very young patients and marginally stable can redislocate. So we try not to let that happen. But Juan, you're a tough guy and you think, I can get this. I can get this. <laughs> the, the mama already told me, no open reduction, please. Okay. A little more abduction. I can get it. I can get it. Got it. And you potentiate AVN. And a sad customer. You're not going to do that, are you, Juan? No. 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 Comprehendo, everybody. Good. So here we are six months later. We've had a lot of cast. And I will just say, if you are six months of age, you're already at three cast, you, you've had a lot of treatment very early. Baxter said before, Treating young kids is ooh, putting a four, a three and four month old kid asleep and trying to get a tricky hip to stabilize is hard to do. Perry, we have a question from one of the uh, persons here from Claudio. Um, would you be, a, you, would you prepare yourself to do a uh, internal reduction, the lat lat reduction? Say that the last part again. I missed the it. Lat lat loaf reduction, Ludlow. L-U-D-L-O-F-F. Oh, medial open re reduction. Next case. <laughs> oh, perfect. Siguiente caso, Claudio. <laughs> All right. So here we are. Let's see. One, you're, 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 you're saying, ah, what a great surgeon I am. And you're 50 months old. And Juan Carlos Cuto asked me before about this is a, how do you think of your hip here, Juan? We'll give you all this credit, Juan, just because we don't know what you look like. We'll never see you again. But, you know, we're going to have fun here. So this is Juan's hip. What do you think of one, one, one's hip, Juan? Juan, ¿qué pensás de esa que se, que se negrosó con la deducción, se negrosó y una, está rarefacta la fisis. Eso por respecto al niño Brian. Avian. Avian, good. What's this problem right here? Stiff left hip. Why? Por la necrosis. Because of the necrosis, Perry. Just like Perthes disease, if these kids come in with this hip stiff like this, oh boy, just be careful. I mean, so in this case here, Dr. Juan Carlos Cuto, I would be very careful of any splinting. I went, this boy had very, this patient had very limited motion. And, and I, I mean, it was a stiff hip and it's not infected. It's not subluxated. It's, it's undergoing AVN. Can you explain that, Cece? Sí, no, no, que eso, que cuando le veis una cadera stiff, eh, rígida, ahí tenés que pensar que está desarrollando una osteonecrosis, que tener mucho cuidado. So, um, so I can, I'll ask anybody, anybody in the line, what, ask one, what should we do now, Juan? What should we do? Juan, ¿qué haces ahora? Which one? Uh, excuse me, uh, Juan, the, uh, we wouldn't put you in the corner, Juan Carlos Cruz, the one to ask. Juan Orano, Juan the, fellow. Juan the fellow. Wait. Orano. 
He said, wait, observe, follow up. Uh, it's a brilliant guy, absolutely. And you know, it's my prerogative. <laughs> <to put laughs> the pictures together, but everything up there is very true. When I saw this hip, I was seeing it for a second opinion, and uh, I, it can happen to me too, but the parents were told that they need an open reduction because it's so stiff. They don't need that. They need time and watching. And again, go back here again. Just if nothing else. Remember this. Just don't push the thing. Just If you can't get it, quit, do a medial approach, or come back some other time. So let's just let's go through that, those different scenarios. Can you say that? Nada, observar, observar que nunca se iba a seguir. Dice que a él le llegan los pacientes y le dice nada, pero me dijeron que haga una reducción cerrada. No, hay que esperarla. So what do you see here, Juan? This is uh, five years later. Cinco años después, Juan. Sí, la cara está deformada, está magna, está corto, breve el cuello, está vara. Yeah, so he looks like a tortoise. Oxa magna, barus, neck. Correct. And there may be, have to be some hip reconstruction. What other big deformity is going to occur that's going to sneak up on us? You can already see it on this overall x-ray. What else is going to happen to the last one? Y va a tener una discrepancia en ojitos seguramente por el cortamiento que tiene en el cuello. Leg leg discrepancy, Barry. The epiphysis is in the first six years of life, six, seven years of life. The proximal epiphysis for height of the femur for length is just as important as the distal. This child will end up with probably a four to five centimeter leg length problem. Exacto, Juan. Va a quedar corto. So anyway, it's a big, it's a big deal. So um, it has coxa magna. The acetabulum is remodeling. It's out of, it's not spherical, but it's congruent, and we're going to watch it. Sí, sí. Sí, sí. No, básicamente las deformidades clásicas de partes. Coxa magna, displasia, alteración de femur. This has all been injured here for height, so we've lost a lot. The trochanter will continue to grow. Okay. So uh, a couple more cases, and we asked uh, Bibiana where we should go. Okay. So this is, I think, a real learning curve. And Debbie Eastwood, Deborah Eastwood in England recently published on this. And this is a three-month-old failed pavlic harness, a sickly child, and came to see me. And, or one of us, and I, yeah, I came to me, and it was almost too sick, to, too, too, the child was too small and not too very healthy, so we, we quit. So both hips are located or dislocated. Um, let's say, um, Laura, Laura Ortiz, dislocated or located? Laura, ¿están dislocadas o están reducidas las caderas? Somebody explain that to me, I didn't understand. Sí, sí. Las dos caderas están luxadas. Right. Y well, están bilateral dislocation, Perry. It came back a year later, uh, Laura Ortez, and uh, now they're healthier. What is going on now? There's, it's worse, isn't it? Te parece que están peores, ¿no, Laura? Sí, no está evolucionando bien. Yes, okay. Okay. Okay, so this is a tricky hip. This is a hip that we might have put in traction in the past. I don't know if it'd do anything good. How would, how, this is a year old now. What is your, your instinct or your experience, Dr. Ortez, of how you want to treat this, either with a closed or an open reduction? It's got two hips. Creo que intentaría una reducción por vía anterior. Y según cómo evoluciona el paciente intraoperatorio, él consideraría un acortamiento femoral. Anterior approach, close reduction, uh, anterior approach reduction, and if sometimes you need to do a, a femoral um, shortening osteotomy. I, I mean, you meant closed or open reduction? I didn't open, hear. Open anteriorly. Okay. Um, Bibiana, Rodolfo, Sergio, you agree? You approach this, or Jaime? Is Jaime Condi on? No, no está Jaime. Jaime didn't make it, okay. Daniel. Sí, yo estoy de acuerdo con, con la, el, el abordaje de Laura. Yes, they agree, Perry. 
Yeah, so Debbie, so Baxter and Eric, uh, you're gonna go along and say you agree too? What I would do is, is examine this hip under general anesthesia, and if I could get um, a semblance of reduction and a feeling that the hip would go in, I would consider a medial open reduction. If I couldn't, then I would do the approach that's been described, an anterior open reduction with uh, a femoral shortening. But some of these hips are surprising. They may go in, and in which case I do a medial open reduction at this age. And for discussion purposes, they were not Ortolani positive at all. When we put the child to sleep, you didn't get the sense they went in. They were we wanted to go in at all, Baxter. Then, then I would uh, convert to an anterior open reduction, plus or minus femoral shortening. Dr. Gordon. Uh, and we're talking about at a year of age. Uh, one year old, yes, in the bottom, yes, the bottom picture, sir. Yeah, I probably would not do an medial approach open reduction. I would do an anterior approach. Uh, do a do femoral shortening osteotomies if you felt like you could get it in, and this would be one that I would think really hard about doing a pelvic osteotomy as well. Um, so Deborah Eastwood's paper was, and I shared she, somehow we shared this about um, 15 months ago. They looked at these kind of hips in their experience at the Great Ormond Street Hospital in the United Kingdom. For those who don't know, it's a place with a tremendous history of of great surgery and the hips and other things. And they pretty good uh, in the close reduction, pretty good, pretty good experience close reduction. And she said when they looked at their experience with close reduction for this, the outcome was really poor. Uh, if you look at the total patient later on, because one or the other hips often just had a lot of troubles. So her point was, whether it's a medial assist open reduction or an anterior open reduction, these would go with the concept that you probably to get hips and sockets and doing well later approach them with, uh, with open, open reductions of whatever type you want and not close reductions. So with that, uh, I thought uh, that's what I would do. And um, I must say in the past, I've tried close reductions and I don't know what our track record is, but this is a very proximal hip. And uh, I did bilateral, I, if I can get, and the, it'll be the next cases on the media approach, if I can get hips to dock and they're pretty stable, I would consider medial approaches as Baxter outlined. These hips wouldn't, so I did anterior open approach. I don't have much um, hesitation to add an osteotomy for, for both correcting tension and antiversion. Uh, and uh, that's what I, I did, did here. And uh, let's see, I think, um, I'm sorry, was this, was Dr. Ortez discussing this? Laura? Sorry, we have a question about the sequences of doing- Wait, 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 wait hold on. Was Dr. Ortez, is Dr. Ortez, were you discussing this? Laura, no? Which, which? Laura, Laura Ortiz, estás? Sí, estoy. Eh, la cadera izquierda impresiona mejor reducida, me da dudas la, la derecha. So the left one looks pretty good, the right one not so good. The right one could, okay, so I would tell you, Laura, that we've got the Haría right one. Un, un examen dinámico bajo radioscopía. Dynamic assessment under Okay. Actually, we, we, the, the right hip looks like we've got a two abducted and internal rotated, so it looks inferior, but actually we just changed the leg position and it looked okay. Can you explain that to her, CC? Sí, que es por la posición de la pierna. Que si te fijas, inclusive la, 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 la derecha y la izquierda tienen la posición en que está la pierna es diferente, por eso se ve peor, pero está bien reducida. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go on and then we'll answer the other question that was asked. So there we are in the cast, and um, we did get imaging on this one because we wanted to do it. So what do you think, Dr. Uh, Ortez, about the, this hip right here, actual view of this hip? There's socket, there's the ball. In the image, both coronal and axial de resonancia, impresiona que está bien reducida, las dos good, caderas. Good reduction, Barry, both hips. Okay, good, good, good. And um, uh, let's go on one more. Okay, so here we have the child at five months, and here we have, okay. 
and we will answer the question was asked first. So what do you think here at five months, Dr. Ortez? How about the format located? ¿Cuál fue la pregunta? Which one, Perry? Dr. Ortez, are the hips, are they located? Both of them. Las dos, las dos están bien, Laura? Sí, están, las dos están eh, reducidas. Yes. Igual haría un seguimiento, ¿no? Obviamente el paciente. Right. Sí, de porque presiona una leve displasia acetabular. Residual displasia on the acetabulum. Sure, you would expect that. Look at the sockets up here. They're terrible. They're going to get better. You see the black lines? Sí, la, la, ¿qué pasa? La, yes. Juan Carlos Cuto, we were talking about this before. So this is, these, these are white lines underneath the black, but they don't show up. So the growth plate up to your four or five years of age is, goes through under the trochan. It's one continuous growth plate. Say that, please. Sí, sí. Hay, una, hay, hay una, una, una cartilago de crecimiento continuo a, arriba de, de, del epífisis ahí. And usually you grow faster here than you do here. Y creces más en la parte medial que en la parte lateral. And that's the sign of a healthy intact growth plate. Y eso significa que, la, está, que, que, es, que es healthy, que es sana. Es una In cadera numbers. sana. The distance from here to here shows how much growth has occurred from this, we call a Harris growth disturbance line, since reduction. So básicamente medís la distancia que hay entre arriba de la línea y la línea, y si hay un buen crecimiento o hay buena cantidad de hueso, ahí sabés que está creciendo bien. Cecilia, están preguntando si siempre la hace las dos al mismo tiempo, o hace primero una y después sí. la otra cada seis meses. Perry, so the question was about um, how do you perform? Do you perform first one and then the other one both at the same time? No, so, so I tell you what, um, put it this way. <laughs> I've already shown my cards. Can you say that in Spanish? Dice que él ya mostró sus cartas. But let's stop, let's stop. Um, and I kind of know what Eric does. So before we influence Baxter, Baxter, the question is one, one hip, one time, one hip. Down. How do you do these? St staged or at the same time, sir? Probably uh, up to 10 years ago, I'd do it staged. Now I would probably uh, evaluate that after doing the first hip. Is the, is the first hip stable? Am I very happy? Have I not had a lot of blood loss? If so, then I'd proceed with the second hip. But if there have been any problems with the first tip, I'd stop there and stage them. So before you used to stage them, but now you would do them simultaneously if the blood loss wasn't too bad. Yes. So, so antes él las hacía, las hacía en secuencia y ahora las hace simultáneamente, salvo que cuando la vaya a hacer, la primera que hace, si tiene muchos problemas, no, la va, a hacer, no va a hacer la otra. Dr. Gordon? You know, I, I try really hard to get them both done at the same time. Sí. I would usually have a discussion with the family about blood loss issues like that. I don't think in terms of age and, and neural anesthesia, there's any evidence that doing, you know, two moderate anesthesia and one longer anesthesia, there's a, there's a big difference. No, 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 no. Pero mira lo que te voy a decir. Pero el azúcar es rico. Mute yourself, please. Eh, por favor, eh, pónganse mudos. Gracias. Yes, Perry. Uh, you guys, were, did, you, did you hear what Eric said? You explained what Eric said. Yes, yes. That yeah, we will both have, at the, al mismo tiempo. I have always been doing them at the same time. I have never had a problem with the blood transfusions I've had to do. I'm talking about bigger kids. I've been very conscientious in the last three years talking to anesthesiologist after anesthesiologist after neurologist about what's better, like Eric just said, one, let's say, three or four hour operation versus two, two and a half hour operations or whatever. And I, I can't find anybody to tell me it makes a difference. They don't have the data. If I can get them done at one time to me, it's just easier on the family and the patient and all timing the second hip gets to be a little bit of a, a, a almost a logistical problem. So I try not to stage them unless 
I'm like Baxter said, told by the anesthesiologist, you need to quit halfway through. Um, anyway, uh, so it's does that answer? Uh, what do you what what would you guys uh, do at the Garahan? Um, Rodolfo, do you do these surgeries? Yes, Barry. Stage? You, no, no, no. Both hips at the same time. Same time. Uh, Sergio Innocenti? Una por vez. Stage. Daniela Paladano? Eh, depende de si, cómo, cómo está el paciente en el quirófano. Si, si va todo bien, se puede hacer la segunda. It depends how we are doing intraoperatively. So the first hip goes really smooth and fast, we'll go and do the other one. Uh, Bebiana? Eh, pienso en lo mismo que el doctor Buster Willis. Depende de cómo me vaya la primera, hacer la segunda. So they say, like normally they will assess how the first hip goes and everything goes nice and smooth and no problems, we'll move to the other one. Any more questions about staging? No. Okay, I would just for the for what it's for what it's worth. I would splint this child during naps and nighttime as long as they would tolerate some kind of an abduction splint. So splinting for this patient. For what it's worth, I have no. Uh, um, Eric and. Uh, Cuánto tiempo? Same. Get up. Bax, splint? Agree. Agree. Probably, probably for a year and then stop. Un año. Let's say, we got, let's say we got in there and go back to this picture here. And if I get a nice reduction, I, I'll just give a little history here and then Cece, you can tell us. So a um, hundred years ago, people figured out how to go immediately to get into the hip. And about 1973, a man named Ferguson from Pittsburgh a very dynamic leader in hip surgery and young kids, published kind of a re rediscovery of the medial approach. And he more or less said, it's a fail safe, great operation. And in the seventies, lots of his disciples, he was a strong personality, a good guy, said, okay, let's do medial approaches. And the problem was after that, the rate AVN was horrific. It was anywhere from 25 to 60%, depending upon who was doing the surgery. So then we had to start thinking who should have a medial approach. Cece, can you summarize that? So, so en un momento se hizo bastante popular hacer el, el abordaje medial y después empezaron a haber muchas incidencias de necrosis. Entonces ahí es como que perdió popularidad. So in the mid 70s, late 70s, I, my mentor, I never had a, my mentor was a guy named Sherman Coleman, who's deceased. He was a very, very good surgeon. And we cornered him one day and said, you know, we, 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 we got together, we had a huddle and we asked Professor Coleman, what's the indication for a medial approach? And he really was a thoughtful guy, a very good surgeon. And he said, I think if you can have an Ortolani positive hip with a narrow safe zone, and you'd like to do more than just the ductal tenotomy, that's the indication for a medial approach. So la, el abordaje medial serían esos pacientes que tienen una zona de safe, la safe zone la tienen, y se podría hacer un abordaje medial. So starting the safe, the safe zone, zone or what else, what else did you say, Barry, the safe zone? If the safe zone is a little narrow and you want to do a little more than a ductal tenotomy, okay. ortolani positive hips, and the patient's under 24 months of age, you could do a medial approach. Men menos de dos años, ortolani positiva, eh, puedes, eh, puedes hacerle ese, el amordaje medial. And we did about, I did about, by that protocol, I'll show you the pictures, I did about somewhere around 28 of them. And uh, one of our past residents looked them up and we've, we've kind of lost the patients, unfortunately. We had very little AVN that were type two, three, and four. You get a fair amount of overgrowth by type two, three, and four. 
So I'm going to go through this and then Baxter can chime in because he says he does at the times. And I know Eric does them once in a while too. Is that not right, Eric? I know you do. Yeah, I do them occasionally. So this is the approach that I've I'd used. I go under the pectineus, the adductor along gets cut and you carefully go down here. And when I go down here now, I would take out a Doppler to see if I can uh, confirm that the big vessels I see really are vessels they are. And I try to be cautious and do this. And you can feel this whole thing much better if the hip can be reduced and somebody can hold it reduced because then you can feel the neck when you get down there or the proximal femur. If it's totally unreducible, it's kind of hard to know where you go. That's my feeling. Baxter, tell us your thoughts here. Yes, that's why I think it's important to examine this hip and make this decision interoperatively. Uh, if you, you want to have a feel that the hip is reducing closed, but has a very narrow safe zone and is tight. So what you're going to do is do this medial open approach to uh, relieve the obstructions to reduction or the tightness on the medial side. You can't do a capsulorophy through this approach, but you can certainly relieve the obstructions to the reduction, open the capsule up. So that's critical. It's usually about a, a one, about a two eye, one person uh, visualization. It's, 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 you can't have too many retractors down there and too many fingers or eyes looking in because you're looking at a little a small entrance. So this is a patient uh, that came Eric, from here. We, yeah. we will soon be uh, needing to finish the, the Zoom meeting. We are around 1022 here in uh, St. Louis. Is that seat? Okay. What, what's the, okay, we have to ask our host Bibiana. Sí, Cecilia, tenemos un poquito más de tiempo hasta doce y media, está bien, ¿eh? Si quiere mostrar otro caso, puede. We can do till 10.30, Perry, so we have eight more minutes. Okay, uh, eight more minutes. Okay, that would be perfect. Okay, so let's go back here. So this patient here, 13 months old, I reduced it. I didn't have an arthrogram, but this is a rather almost near perfect AP x-ray. And the same person, Sherman Colmey, Shulman, who taught me a lot of this stuff, said, look at the metaphysis of the iliacial line. And if there's more than three or four millimeters difference, consider doing a medial approach on the hip that you can reduce. The head's too lateral on an older patient. So we got a safe zone and we can, and this is, if you can't feel much here, you reduce this, you can feel the neck. So we, that was possible for this hip. We did this. My sense of what you get if you injure something is usually the lateral circumflex, not the medial, the lateral circumflex artery. But this is a big diagram, and um, we're up in here when you're working. So here's 13 months. So, Perry, you use ultrasound to assess the vessels, correct? A Doppler to assess the vessels, is that what you said? Yeah. Yes, yes, you can use a Doppler, and yes, yes, fine tip Doppler helps you here. So, usan el Doppler para localizar la, las arterias. And here it is after we did that, and it looks. I mean, this is what I like to, like to see. Um, Eric, what do you what? How much you you cut the capsule? You cut the psoas tendon. Eric eh, dejó la reunión porque se, tiene que, se tuvo que ir a trabajar, eh. Yeah, I think you've got to uh, take down the psoas to be able to get there, and you definitely have to open the capsule if you're going to do that. So, resección de tenotomía del psoas y capsulotomía. The vessels, Baxter, what do you, 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 you... I don't use a Doppler. I try to visualize them, though, and, and make sure we're very careful at not uh, disrupting them. Uh, staff from uh, Garahan, we, are we doing this approach much? Y si usan ultrasonido o no para identificar las arterias, la circunfleja. No, no usamos. No sería. usamos, no. ¿Y hacen el approach? ¿Este approach lo hacen? Sí. Sí. sí so sí. they do the approach, sí, but they don't use ultrasound, Perry. No, but they do the medial approach. Yes, they do. Okay. Upper age limit for them? ¿Era máxima? Eh, 12, 14 meses. 14 months. 
12 to 14 months. Bebiana? Sí, hasta los 18 meses. 18 months. Okay. Um, this would be a... Uh, Bebiana, what time do you want to stop at 10.30? At uh, 12.30 your time? Yeah. Sí, 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 está bien. Otra más puede ser. Okay. So, Bibiana, what's your thoughts here? Uh, we have enough, I mean, we could use, this is a nice time to stop because the next stuff is on open reduction. And then osteotomies, um, it could be another two, three hours easily. Yeah. We have those other things. So, what do you think of what happened, Bibiana? You're the hostess, you want to do this? Summarize in about a minute and a half here. Sir, yeah, please. Puede continuar, que continúe con este caso y después hablamos. Lo que pasa es que ahora pasa a reducción abierta, entonces le va a llevar más tiempo. A mí me parece ah, que no, no, no. lo podríamos dejar acá y hacer la próxima reducción abierta y osteotomías. Perfecto. Sí, sí, so, sí, Bernie, sí. why don't we leave it here and then we can do open reduction and osteotomies next time? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, want, I was just going to have her to summarize how we, how we did. Yeah, I, yes, I'm going to stop. I just, she's summarizing the meeting. So, Viviana, si quieres hacer una, como unas palabras de cierre de la, de la meeting. Sí, eh, eh, Rodolfo, ¿querés eh, despedirnos? ¿Quién es eso? Rodolfo. Rodolfo. No, bueno, quiero agradecer a, a Perry, a Gordon y a vos, Cecilia, por el esfuerzo de la traducción. Oh, no hay problema, bueno. está muy agradecido y un honor haberlos tenido, uh, sorry. Perry, so he's really thankful and grateful that you guys took your time and do this, this is very important and they really appreciate that. Okay, that's nice. Did the format work? <laughs> yes, I think it was great, don't you agree, guys? Like, I, pregunta si parece que el formato funcionó así, el hacerlo interactivo. Sí, creo que sí. Yes. Eh, nosotros planificamos con Perry otra reunión para junio 20, en donde podemos seguir eh, haciendo este programa, sí. siguiendo este programa o con otros casos más. Sí, excelente. So, the, yeah, I think that this format was great for everybody. I think that the interaction and the possibility, you know, of discussing and learning is fantastic. So we are planning if, if it will be possible to continue this in the future with the next phase that I think will be open reduction and osteotomics. Dalia, what do you think? Dalia, estás por ahí? Uh, yes. Uh, Spanish or English, I'm not sure, but uh, anyhow, this was absolutely great. Thank you so much to Diana and our uh, Argentinian yeah. friends. Dalia, what does great mean? What, what, what's good about what's great? Be more specific. Great what? Great cases. What? Cases, were, cases were great. Okay. Um, Let's see, Juan Carlos Cuto, thoughts? First of all, congratulations who those have coordinated this event. And the academic session was superb. Thank you so much for your predisposition. And as okay. always, you have done. Believe me, it was fun on my part. How about uh, Baxter and um, uh, Eric, comments? I enjoyed it very much. I'm happy to participate in the future. Uh, and thanks to Perry and Bibiana for organizing this. Excellent uh, to Bibi slides, Perry. Thanks. Thanks to Bibiana for asking us to do this. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, I think it worked great um, from our standpoint. The uh, only uh, thing is next time it would be great to see if we can get rid of the limit to the number of participants. I know yeah. there were people trying to get on that couldn't get on, and it'd be great to be able to expand this as much as we can. Bibiana, that's that's your that's your yeah. responsibility, Bibiana. Tell her that she's that's that you got to get that fixed in your end, Bibiana. Bibiana, tenemos que hacer que la próxima vez puedan entrar más de 100 personas. Yes, the next time we will label for 500 participants to be able to join. Fantastic. La pro the next time for 500, Eric and Barry. Okay, so the next day two Also, I'm sorry, I would like to add that this uh, will be uploaded in our YouTube channel, so anybody who could not join will be able to see the presentation again, and we will send you the link shortly. Bibiana, you pick the date in the future. What's your next date, Bibiana? 20 de junio sería. June 20th. That's a Saturday? Sí, creo que sí. Estoy casi yeah. segura que sí, me tengo que fijar. 
Sí, sí, sí. Para nosotros a las 10 de la mañana y para ustedes a las 8, sí. So Perry, you cannot even imagine how messages you you guys have on Eric and Baxter about being so thankful about you spending time with us that it was great to learn a lot. It's, you know, this is very important for us in Argentina to have the opportunity to learn from somebody, you know, from all you guys. So we well, really appreciate this. Really, really, really is good. Well, believe me, we all learn. Uh, and we learn listening to everybody. We all learn. Um, so Bibiana, at one time, you, you know, we were imagining we'd get all the DDH done today, but we didn't. So we, on the Saturday, at one time, you said maybe we could do Cavus and Flatfoot. Maybe instead we should continue and do more DDH on this next Saturday and then do foot some other time. Can you ask her that, uh, please? Sí, que vamos, Viviana, vamos a seguir. Yo creo que lo mejor es terminar displasia y después hacer eh, pie plano y las otras cosas, ¿no te parece? Sí, sí, entendí. Y me parece que todo el mundo va a querer seguir con este plan de luxación de cadera hasta la adolescencia, uh -huh. que son cosas muy interesantes, y después planear otra para pie plano. Excelente. Yes, Perry, that's the plan. We should do that. Excellent. Thank you, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for asking us to do this, Bibiana. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you guys. Thank Anybody? you.